Welcome to Paranormal Central, broadcasting live from Central California with your hosts Jeffrey Gonzalez and Alan Thomas. Broadcasting video worldwide at ParanormalCentral.net and broadcasting audio on the Dark Matter Network at ArtBell.com. Are you ready to witness something that you cannot explain? Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Paranormal Central. Broadcasting live in the bottom left hand corner of the Nevada Triangle. But we're in California. So am I messing with your head yet? My name is Jeffrey Gonzalez. I am your host for the show. I'm also the founder of a group called the Sanger Paranormal Society. Been in existence for over forever. 10 years forever and doing this show forever uh, more than seven years now so been doing it a while if you are barely tuning in man well let's say God, i'm just glad you're here because man you missed a lot a lot and we have archived you can always go back and watch them thank you for showing up wherever you may be around the world we are broadcasting video on live stream right now. If you are watching us, hello. If you don't want to watch us, you can always go to artbell.com at the Dark Matter Network and listen to us there. Yes, you heard me right. Artbell.com is broadcasting us live worldwide on the Dark Matter Network. So you can catch us either video or audio, whichever way you want. We got apps, so you'll never be able to miss the show ever, ever, ever. I can't do this by myself. I have two people in here who are pains in my butt, but that's okay. I love them. To my right, to your left, Alan Thomas. Good evening, everyone. And nice to see y'all. Manning, what? <laughs> I did it again. Womaning the board back in the corners of the Paranormal Central we have. Yes, Emerald is back. I'm back. Hey. Hi, Emerald. Weeks, I have cobwebs on my desk. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you for showing up wherever you may be. We're going to have some fun tonight for all those who, again, if this is your first time, you are in for a show. We try to bring you killer shows every Sunday. I mean, that's what our job is going to be from now on. That way you keep coming back week after week after week. So, all right. Um, again, I want to thank you for showing up. My name is Jeffrey Gonzalez. We have Alan Thomas over here, and then we have Emerald Bonilla over there. So uh, thank you for tuning in wherever you may be. Uh, again, we are broadcasting live somewhere in an undisclosed area, actually location, and I'm just going to say the city, Fresno, California. And the reason why we are broadcasting here in Fresno is because when I started this right around 2002, uh, I started finding that this was a very, very paranormal place that we live in. Um, and I started doing some investigating, and man, we have everything here. And uh, so we're just not talk show hosts. We're also investigators. I actually have a team, and these two guys in here with me right now are part of that team. And we have other members, but they're out there in La La Land right now. So, um, all right. <laughs> did Danny just went, did you sneeze? Yeah, and Danny is one of those guys in La La Land. Laughing at you. Laughing at me. <laughs> and uh, every Sunday, right before we start the show, we have somebody who thinks he knows a lot about Bigfoot. His name is Danny Valderrama. And he gives us what um, is basically the, pa the past week's news on Sasquatch. And last week he wasn't here because he was uh, pretending to be Santa Claus. Did you deliver all your presents last week, mister? I did. did I got you? everything done. Did you? Yep. So uh, now, now you're getting ready for the returns. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> slow down till about March. No way. Yeah. 
yeah. Are you kidding me? No. Wow. Do, so do, do they make you work overtime then? Uh, you can if you want to, but you don't have to work weekends like we were working. Right. Cool. All right. All right, Mr. Danny Bell Durama is going to fill us in on the Bigfoot stuff, and uh, we're going to be showing some photographs here on the live stream if you're watching us right now. If you are listening to us at the artbell.com website on the home page, there is a link there marked Paranormal Central. You're going to have the pictures there as well, so you don't have to come over to live stream. You can just go that uh, straight to artbell.com, click on the link there, and you can go and view the pictures as we view them here starting with picture number one and I'm gonna go ahead and bring that up right now and uh, let me get that on the screen and I'm gonna say you are on Mr. Danny go for it all right this is uh, from December 23rd not too long ago this is from a Yukult, Washington now, the witness here has often thought that he's seen somebody run across the, the road while he's delivering newspapers in the morning and he would often stop in the same area to use the bathroom. And that could be seen as a, to anybody, any creature out there, it could be seen as a, him marking his territory. Right. So he would hear noises in that area, breaking branches and grinding sounds. But on at 4.30 in the morning on December 23rd, he was in his Jeep, and he had pulled over, and he had a dome light on in his Jeep, and he was checking his route map. And he had he said there was dust on his windshield, from the road because it's a little dusty there and it was lightly covered covering it and there's a reflection on his windshield from his car stereo the faceplate was blue and he had like a screensaver on there of a dolphin that was like jumping back and forth on the screensaver and out of the corner of his eye he could see movement on the passenger side like something coming towards the jeep so he flicked off the the dome light on his jeep and he uh he looked over at the, the passenger side. He could see something crouched over, coming, walking towards the, the, the jeep there. And he said the, uh, the size was about six and a half feet tall because it, it was crouched over, but it was still almost the same size as the, the jeep that he was in. And uh, he said that it, it was focused on the cab, like the light that was coming from the cab. So it was like walking over to see what it was. And it was possibly from the stereo, and it got to within five or six feet of the of the car, and then it noticed that somebody was in there, and so it, it quickly crossed the road in front of them and took off into the forest. And he he, uh, he said they they were, the report says that there was a good description because he was really close to it, but it doesn't really give the details of what his description was. And he says the eyes were really big. That's pretty much all it says. It says that the eyes were really big, so it wasn't like a man or anything. Cool. So he, he popped the, the car, the Jeep in gear, and took off. And as he took off, he called 911. <laughs> and guess what they told him? Run. They said it was probably a vagrant or a homeless guy. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we get that, huh? Oh, my I keep God. hearing that a lot now. Really? Yeah. It, it's You know what? That is going to be the, I guess, the excuse that they're going to use. You know, I'm going to be honest with you. Where have you ever heard someone use the excuse of a homeless person to a Bigfoot sighting? I, I never have until, until until us until us right yeah, that yeah. was the first and, time and it, Lauren Coleman basically said the homeless person left the impression on the window um, and then uh, last week when we have JC on then he used the old homeless situation and uh, so I think now people are going to use that as a excuse homeless person uh, and and this is probably up in the mountains or not the mountains but somewhere where a homeless person should not be, right, Danny? Yep, not way up there. Well, I mean, if the guy's delivering papers, it's in a neighborhood. No, oh, yeah, true. And, and yeah. Yakult's not Yakult is not a big town either. It's really small. It doesn't say what part of the town it took place in, but it's a. Uh, if you're familiar with Washington, it's east of Highway Five, and it's south of Mount St. Helens, and it's north of Silver Star Mountain, which also has a big sighting there that was right. on. A, Finding Bigfoot. Okay, well, well, this is Washington, so obviously they know exactly what he saw, but they can't say it with the Bigfoot. Yeah. No, right when he on. called the nine one one. He had tears in his eyes, and when they figured out that hey, this isn't a nut, right. they did tell him that 
he wasn't the first person to report a Bigfoot sighting in the area that he was in. Wow. Yeah, he said he was a, a big skeptic before it. Not no and more. He says he has a degree in science, and he doesn't want to go back. He, he's not going to stop in that same area anymore because right. he usually stopped there every day. So no more. <laughs> no more. <gonna> keep going. <laughs> no more taking. No, no, I was going to say no more taking a leak on the side of the road. <laughs> Bring the bottle. Yep. All right. Okay. Next one. I wonder. Pitch. I wonder if the Bigfoot was like trying to figure out who in the world was like taking a leak on his mark spot. You know. <laughs> well, you know what? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Danny said that he was focused on the light, so he didn't see the guy in the truck. I'm thinking, right? Yeah, it didn't sound like he saw the guy. He was just no. focused on the light in there, the blue light that was in the, oh. that was reflecting off the windshield. Does it? Does it? You know, I don't have a stereo that has a screen saver, but right. Yeah. <laughs> did they move? You know, like if it has a dolphin, is it like jumping or uh, is it yeah, just the a picture? Yeah, dolphin jumping across the screen. Oh, oh see, so he was probably like, yeah. memorized. Like, what the heck? heck you know? It? Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Well, you know what? That's something that these things are not familiar with so you take that into consideration next time we want to really throw a bigfoot for a loop and freak them out is use some type of take a projector in a sheet and put it way out in the woods you know and just <laughs> set it up right and then uh, play i don't know um harry and the hendersons oh over deers running through over <laughs> deers oh dude that sounds like fun or monkeys you know what next week yeah. finding bigfoot is going to be doing that because you know what because they're listening to us right now don't no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> all right got picture number two on the screen right now and for those who are on the artbell.com website go to picture number two go for it it says it's near uh this next sighting is uh, from the cryptozoology news page from december 14th and it's a uh, zana alabama which is near daviston and it's four people who claim to have seen a very large black Bigfoot across the road or on the side of the road. And all four of these sightings occurred along a four-mile stretch of the Alabama State Route 22 in Tallapoosa County. So it's, they say it's near mile marker 135. And Jim Smith is a Alabama Bigfoot Society researcher who took up the investigation to go out there. He says the first sighting was a woman on Halloween night. She came around a curve and saw it walking down a trail. And uh, that's all she saw was it moving quickly down the trail. So a month later, Jim Smith got a call from her, and he went out there to investigate it. And he became the second witness. He came around the same curve she did and saw it in the same spot and the same trail that she saw it in. And he says that it was very muscular, very large, very wide, and also black. And then um, a third man traveling east on that same road says it was almost dark when he saw the the creature. His headlights hit the reflective road sign. It was all yellow, and he saw the creature very tall standing next to the the sign there. And as he approached, as the car approached the, the Bigfoot, it crossed the road in three steps, vanishing into the woods. So Jim Smith went out there, and he, uh, tried to cross the road and it took him nine steps to get across the road. And so then... Disconnected. <laughs> oh, wow. Hi, Danny. What happened there? Mm. I shall tr- call him back. Yeah, See, go ahead now that back. We know that wasn't the internet. No, because yeah. that's a uh, phone. That's weird. Oh, he's trying to call us back. Okay, go ahead. Answer. Maybe his phone died. Uh, I don't know. His phone sounded good, though. Yeah. Well, I mean, even if the battery is low. Is he, is he uh, calling right now? No, if I call him and we call each other right, at the same right, time, right. you know how that goes. Yeah, but he might be listening, so call Danny. Give us a call. Call back. He's old. He probably forgot to charge his phone. <laughs> Man, I am guilty of that. I have people, like, s- sending me text messages, like, where are you and stuff like that, and I'll find my phone in my wife's purse, three days dead. And then play, you know, and all of a sudden it just goes alive as soon as there's a little bit of battery juice. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh. Maybe his phone died. Well, usually, I thought we were calling him on his landline. Yeah. I thought I always thought we were calling him on. Maybe. It still could die. Can it? Yeah. Not unless. We, they have, we have a little wireless phones, three oh, yeah. of them, and they're all dead all the time. <laughs> all right. Well, let's oh, hope. There he is. There he is. 
Plug them in. What happened? Danny, what happened? Yeah. What happened? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I don't know. I was talking, and then all of a sudden I got a dial tone. Wow. What a trip. We're being hassled by the man. <laughs> Come on. Really, guys? We're only talking about <laughs> Bigfoot. Come on. That's just crazy. Okay. Continue on with the story. That's. Right. I don't know if you heard this, but the last, the fourth witness says that it was on Christmas Eve, and he was traveling with his family, traveling west on that same road, and uh, they saw a large black Bigfoot walking through a patch of woods, and it was on a foggy afternoon. It wasn't even night. Mm. So, four witnesses all saying they saw the same thing within about a, a month and a half, or it looks like, on the same four-mile stretch of road in Alabama. See, I, man, you know, ha, now I might be wrong, but uh, I, I've been keeping track of Bigfoot sightings for probably about twenty years, and and when the internet came along, it got easier. You know what I mean? Yep. Only have you noticed, like in the last year, this last year, there's probably more reports of Bigfoot than ever before. And I think people are not embarrassed anymore to come out and say it. Maybe that's what it is, but well, but only I, I just because it, it, yeah. if we look at pop culture now, yeah, like what Bigfoot shows like almost Crazy. all day on. Yep. So I mean, it's just one of those things that's kind of like hip and cool now. Exactly. So it's catching on. I think you're right. I think people are not embarrassed Everybody anymore. Wants to see one. Yeah, absolutely. Or say they saw one. Yeah. I get that all the time. Like, people will tell me, and then when I say, tell me what you saw, you know, they're like, uh, well, it was big. You know, they can't really <laughs> describe it. So I know they didn't see one. Right. Yeah. yeah. Cool deal. Cool. All right. Picture number three. Yep. Okay. It has a, this last one has three pictures with it. Okay. And this is from uh, Bradford, Pennsylvania, in McKean County. And this is from August of 2014, also. Um, this is a man and woman who uh, took, took an e early evening stroll during the summer, and they have a campsite back near a small pond. So they have to, their house is down a long driveway and it's surrounded by woods. So they uh, took down, they have nobody around them. So they walked down to their little picnic area, and they arrived around 7.15 at night, and there's no wind around. So they were looking across, they were sitting across from each other at the, the, at the picnic table, and the wife notices a leaf that's moving really fast and there's no wind. So she thinks that's kind of weird and she follows, she looks to the right of the, where the leaf is going back and forth and she just sees a dark mass between two trees. So she tells her husband to slowly turn around and look and see if she sees what he, what, if he sees what she's looking at and he sees it too. So they, but they're both looking at the same thing. And as they're looking at it, it notices that they're both watching it, and it slowly backs up and disappears into the brush. So it, it, they said that it was about uh, seven feet tall, about four feet wide, and it was only about 30 yards away from them. So the, wow. su the sun was directly on it. Wow. And, and the woman said, described the face as kind of looking like, like a gorilla. And they asked the man uh, what it looked like to him, and he said he could not take his eyes off the, uh, the immense size of the body. It was bigger than anything he's ever seen. So it was just uh, covered in muscle. And then cool. it was the, actually their second visual sighting. If the first one is the wife was driving home and driving down their long driveway on a rainy night. And she saw a large black figure in the headlights that leapt across their driveway and took off into the woods. God, I, I envy and, those people that have Bigfoot's in their backyard. Yeah, you imagine you have to go looking. I know. <laughs> I would move. No way! You're crazy. <laughs> You're crazy. Well, if I had kids, yes. But if I was yeah. two adults out there, or just myself, I'd be I'd be spending money on cameras. I'd be putting cameras everywhere. Put the wife tire out in the backyard. Booby on the traps. Pool. Yeah. Tell her here, sing this song. <laughs> oh man, I would. Oh god. Okay. Yeah, they, right. they call the BFRO, and that's where this report is from. It's from the BFRO. So they started putting things together after they had these visual sightings of it and they've said that they've heard nighttime vocalizations and then they've also heard knocking sounds coming from the woods behind their house and in November of 2013 they heard a vocalization at 4 a.m. and the husband went out and he found the several tracks that's the first picture that's the actual track that he found out there 
says it measures uh, 14 and a half to 15 inches long, about five inches wide. Man. And then, uh, where, where is this? in August of 2014, while they were laying in bed, after a heavy rain, the husband could uh, um, hear activity in the yard, and he could hear footfalls, really heavy ones. And every time he could hear the footfall, he could hear the squishing of the water on the on the grass. Mm. Oh my God. And he looked at his dog who was laying on the bed, and the dog was alert, laying there, and all the hair on it was standing up. <laughs> so he knew that it was something out there. But uh, that's that's the second picture. The second and the third picture that are there are the pictures that he went out and took the next year, the next morning in the yard. And it was 15 feet from their bedroom. <laughs> this thing was walking around. Wow. God, that's cool. So, he said that there is a bear population out there, but it's if you look at the pictures, there's no claws or anything, nah. and some of them are hard to tell because they're in the they're deeply impressed in the in the grass outside, but in the muddy one, you can't see any claws on there. And uh, bears don't leap across the driveway; no. they don't bang sticks together. <laughs> you know, they they don't do all that stuff. So actually, bears don't really sink in the ground that far either. They, I mean, they're not they don't weigh. Like, where is this at again? This is in uh, Pennsylvania. Yeah, like Pennsylvania. Their bears are, aren't that big. And their uh, weight is distributed evenly among the four legs. Four, yeah. The four. Mm-hmm. Now, if Bigfoot has two, right. and that's where the, the weight sinks in. So. Especially when he's only on one foot. Right. And all 1,500 pounds, you know, <laughs> like. <laughs> yep. And you hear a... Now, now that they're looking out there, they found uh, green trees that, that aren't dead. They're... they're still alive and they have them with tree breaks and they're twisted and they, they're finding stick stru- structures out there I want to go and then uh, uh, rocks started to be thrown at their house and they found where the rocks were piled up uh, after being thrown <laughs> at their house they could see the rocks that were thrown at their house <laughs> I would be moving man Dude, packing that's awesome man I would be packing but they would also notice too that it's pretty much seasonally it's like at the end of summer and they think they're coming to get the corn and the apples that are there, mm. the apple crops, because usually in November when when the hunting season starts for the deer, they don't have any more activity until the next summer. Wow. Yeah, man, so they're starting to see a pattern. Yep, You're right, Jeff. Like, climb a couple of telephone poles or something way up there and put some cameras aiming down. Facing down. Some, it wouldn't oh. even know. No. It's, uh, I mean, Because oh. it's looking down like, I bet it looks around like us. And that's why everybody puts their cameras like waist level or, you, you know, know. I was just thinking, you guys, that, you know, one of the episodes for the show, I want to go up and get the cameras. And the, aren't the gates closed? I yeah, we're so, the yeah. Son of a beep. And it's way back there. I know it is. So yeah, that, like four miles. How in the heck are we supposed to do that now with all the camera? Oh, God. You, get, well, you can. Alan. I'll do it. You sure? Yeah, I'll take a bicycle or something. Yeah. You know, oh, I didn't think about I bikes. I won't pedal it. I'll just walk, you know, and just sit on it and walk. Mountain bikes. I never thought about mountain bikes, dude. Going up would kill me, though. I never thought about bikes. And I, I and we can put you on a wagon. I'll pull you on the wagon. That'd be fun. <laughs> huh? That'd be fun. I'll bike out I there. never thought about bikes, you guys. Seriously. It, it actually might not be. I can't pedal them. Well, well, then how in the heck? Well, well, then how get you a dirt bike. <laughs> yeah, I I had an argument with the forestry over this already. <laughs> right, but they said I could do it on the road if I could get it on. You know, stay on the dirt road. They said I could get what though? Anything with wheels. But if I go off the road, then they're gonna okay, get me. Okay, okay. So if we buy you like a cheapy three wheeler, that'll just that you can. It's yeah. okay mm-hmm. because you're handicapped, and yep, we'll um, yeah. and you'll get your handicap sticker, and you'll put it on that, and it will be fine, right? That's right. Sweet. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, I, mean, I don't even have to buy permits or nothing. Just put carry my handicap thing okay because i was thinking about that because you know i'm thinking now february it looks like they're forcing us this month of january we can't have any vacation the vaca- they're not giving anybody the vacations so uh it looks like we're gonna have to start filming in february which sucks because that's gonna put us back a month on, the, on the whole, this whole filming uh stuff so eh, it'll be all right so yeah, I got some plans anyway. So I got some things I want to do. Um, they have those those mountain bikes that have motors on them too, so that run yeah. the tires. Oh, so you don't have to pedal. Right, right. Oh, the little those. chainsaw ones, huh? You you won't yeah. sneak up on them. Yeah. yeah. So here you coming. Yeah, unfortunately. So man, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to a, a electric. You need a you need a golf cart. Yeah, well, they have these electric ATVs. It look just like a quad. Yeah. Or, you know. A, 
but only it's electric mm-hmm. and it'll go 25 miles that's only it's only like a lot of work four miles in there yeah. and it's quiet i mean you, you we could and carry a lot of gear on then you, you, you can know. pull the wagon then Oh yeah, yeah. Pull a wagon, a couple mm-hmm. of wagons. That will have like a, a train, two wagons with all the camera equipment. Well, on. it has it has a thing on the front. You could just you could strap we have, stuff. No, we have a lot of stuff down and one on the back. A lot know. of stuff. I could even carry somebody, but I probably would go less miles. Right, right, right. So. But I'll just carry an extra battery. Right. I have to spend the night out in that cold. Hell no. <laughs> uh, 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 so, all right. What else, Danny? That is it. Hey, Todd Standing. What's up with that? Man, he he disappeared. Okay, fill us in on what happened to him. Yeah, well, well, uh, I guess he got tired of everybody ripping him apart for all his evidence and all that stuff, so he closed his Facebook account, and he said that he was going to be closing his North Book, his North, uh, whatever it is, I can't remember the name of it, North North Bigfoot site or whatever it was called. So, uh, so he, he pretty much he pretty much disappeared, huh? Yeah. People were just ragging on him big time, and then also Jeff Meldrum, they're just ragging on him big time, too. Um, yeah, I haven't heard anything from Jeff Meldrum. So no, he's been quiet as well. He's, he's laying low now too. So oh, hmm, interesting. Well, I don't know. I at this point, you know, a lot of people are saying, you know, give him a chance, give him a chance. But you know, have have you noticed like all the Bigfoot groups, like they went underground, kind of like you know, like there's the ones that you can that are public or whatever you call it, and everybody. A lot of them change the secret. Yeah, and and you could that way because they're everybody's getting attacked mm. from, and I don't know these people they call themselves bigfooters or researchers. Well, but I, they're I attacking I, everyone. Well, let me tell you, you know, if you are a, a legitimate bigfoot researcher, you can't put pictures of just anything and everything on your wall and expect people to think it's all bigfoot. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. like the word Waldo thing. I mean, this is ridiculous. Yeah, it is. You know, it's absolutely ridiculous. You can't do hey, that, you guys. Do you see what I see? Yeah, exactly. No, I don't see it. <laughs> you know, you just can't do that. People are going to make fun of you. And the stuff that I see like that right now on my wall and not my wall, but on other people's wall, I just I laugh. You cannot you cannot walk someplace and start taking pictures. And every picture you see a Bigfoot. It's absolutely ridiculous, you guys. You're smoking crack. And I'm gonna say it. It's and they're not even really taking pictures. They're taking video. Yeah. Okay. And then they then they freeze frame it because they saw a shadow or something. Right. Or five little shadows and look, they start circling them. There's one and there's one and there's one. You know, <laughs> like oh wow, yeah, look you, at that. You can't you, know. you can't have that. No. Uh, no. But only the the people don't have to be so rude. You know well, what I mean? I mean that it's getting they're but, out. They'll. Well, well, you know what, though? To, to get people. Well, I mean, come on. Um, that's just stupidity. You're, you're making it happen. Don't do that. I, I mean, true. come on, you guys. <sighs> I, I can't wait. I actually want to see some of them I don't like. You know, the, uh, they're so mean. I can't wait for Bigfoot to be known. That way, they, they these it'll really shut these guys up because they're 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 just ripping people because there's no Bigfoot. Mm. I mean, they're just ripped and ripping to rip. Right. And one day, well, you know, when the, when it finally comes out and there is a Bigfoot, um, you know, we don't know who these people are, anyways. They're just gonna go away. And that's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. I can't wait. I, I just you know, yeah. I wish we would know who they are, like faces, but you know, faces on these trolls. But oh well. All right, Danny. All right. Have a good year, safe year, and yeah, uh, we Happy shall. New year, guys. Oh, yeah, Happy, Happy New, new year. year, and we will see you on Sunday. Okay. See you, we'll see you next year. year. Yeah, next year. <laughs> wow. I think 2015 right. is going to be our year. To be honest, I really do. I, think I, I be feel. A lot of I feel something very strong, very exciting happening to us. In yep. next Even year. if we have to sacrifice somebody to get a Bigfoot. Emerald. Danny. To do. Emerald. Danny. Emerald. Danny. Emerald. Emerald. I'm glad they're not saying. You know what? Me. Why don't we just drive, have Danny drive the the brown truck and run one over? There you go. You don't even have to. through that gate. You, you don't huh. even have to just drive and you'll end up hitting something. Right. Like you usually do. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Okay, all right, Daddy. We'll talk to you later. All right. We'll okay, see, see you. Some Bye. beef see jerky. Bye. In it, you know, what do they call it? Uh, put beef jerky. <laughs> Bigfoot jerky. <laughs> oh, my God. And they'll chase him. Uh-huh. And we'll uh-huh. drop something. All right. Thank you very, very much, Danny Valderrama, our Bigfoot reporter uh, for today's uh, report. All right. Um, 
we are not going to have Heidi again today. She is actually still in the hospital. Um, for those who, you know, um, Heidi has only been with us for a couple weeks, three weeks, maybe at the most, mm -hmm. I think. And when we had Heidi on a couple of months ago because uh, we were interviewing her for her book, she stated to us her medical problems. And she had some very weird and unusual medical problems, which kind of blew us away. Um, and that is what is, um, it's, it put her in the hospital right now. She's okay, I mean, but she has to stay there uh, until it gets better. Um, and if you're listening, Heidi, I got your message. I will reply. I, I just barely got on Facebook today and actually was on the internet today. Yeah. Besides like a couple of seconds here and there when I had Wi-Fi. Oh, okay, so um, we'll just like I said, just take your time, Heidi, and uh, we'll see you when you get back. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. Um, you know what we're gonna do is, uh, you know, our show is three hours every Sunday. I want to say, uh, oh yeah, okay. Um, uh, the second half of the show, which is uh, ninety minutes after the first ninety minutes, we're gonna take a little break and then come back, and then we're gonna take um, phone calls. All right. Hey. We'll I take, like it. We'll, don't. we'll take <laughs> we'll take phone calls, and uh, if you have stories you want to tell us, any sightings, anything crazy you want to, um, you know, share with us, then this is going to be the time for you to t uh, call us. And let me give you the phone number if you don't know it already. Get a pencil, paper, in a couple minutes, I will give you the phone number. Do not so, call now. Do not call now. <laughs> um, and uh, and uh, yeah. So, anyways. Um, I had a, a, a strange request on my Facebook wall, and it's from Alexander Smith, and uh, his cat, uh, you know, there's a lot of, I want to say a lot of animal lovers who watch this show, um, mm -hmm. and including, you know, Emerald is a big animal lover, and, you know, we here at the house have three dogs and two cats, all right, so... Um, we had a, a very unusual request that uh, from Alexander Smith, his cat had a stroke and not doing really well. So he wanted us, with all of the fans who are watching and listening right now around the world, is do a massive meditation for his cat. Why not? You know, why not? Amen. Um, and he mentioned he mentioned uh, the mass meditation that Art Bell did in the 90s, and he actually brought that up. And I, I said, you know what? Hey, you know, if they're going to do it for people, why not do it for animals too? So, for all those animal lovers and for all those people who think we're smoking the crack, um, sometimes we do. But we, but at this point in time, let I don't. Uh, I'm a crim student. Yeah, yeah, I don't either. I drink. I don't Stop incriminating us. I say that. Yeah, I know. I say that all the time. But you know what? I am so clean. Uh, I just say that because you know it's funny. But I know yeah. there's people who are on it too, so I guess it's not funny. So, anyways, um, so let's go ahead and really quick do and, and I'm not um, a, a quick meditation for Alexander Smith's cat. All right, for the next ten seconds. I want everybody to concentrate on, oh, what's his name? Wink. Hold on. Oh, it has a name? It has a name. Of course it has a name. Winky. Uh, winky, Lucky. Winker. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> you know what? I forgot I have a cat. And it's a wow, cat. you forgot you had a cat. Yeah. That's sad. Uh, it is. I, I don't pay attention to it. I have fish. That's what I, I do, fish. They don't bark. Dog. They don't poop on the rug. They it's, don't. it's a winger. 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 All right, so wouldn't it be kind of cool that after we finished, all of a sudden the cat got up and started running around? Oh, that would be cool. Oh my gosh, uh, you better get it on film. All right, <laughs> Alexander, get your camera out right now. Put the video camera on him because we're gonna do the meditation for him right now. All right, everybody, we're gonna meditate for <laughs> for Winger right now. Ten seconds, go. Okay, let's see what happens. All right, Alexander, we answered your request. And let's see what happens. Seriously, dude, 
You let me know if anything happens. Positive vibes for the kids. I'm really interested to see if anything happens. So, all right. Okay. We're going to go ahead and continue. Um, you know, I wrote down some stuff and I would like to talk about it. And, you know, everybody likes when we talk off the cuff and just, you know, start talking. And, and, and that's what we do here. And, and I think we, um, we tend to get into stuff where a lot of people don't because we, you know, uh, uh, we give out our, uh, I don't know. It's just, we just, need, you know, let's keep doing it because people enjoy it. All right. Um, and I have some things I want to talk about and everybody misses Emerald because Emerald is, uh, I don't want to say the antagonist of the group. Devil's advocate. De there you go. Devil's advocate. And uh, no pun intended. Yeah. And, um, and which is good because people enjoy that. So I told Emerald today when she walked in the studio that I am ordering her to let us have it if there's something that you don't like. Don't be embarrassed. I uh, need a buzzard back here. Every time you say something, you're Dude, Aah. that, that, you, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what? Fun. I love that idea. I'll have to make you one. Yes, okay. I'm getting a buzzard. Oh, God help me. Yeah, and a big X like lights up on the back. <laughs> 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 Wrong. Here's the facts. <laughs> All right. Um, you know what? I like that idea. All right, good good job. Okay. I'll have to make you a buzzard. Okay, cool. And then also, too, what I wanted to do is uh, starting next year, I'm going to give, oh, God help me. I'm going to give my wife an intercom, and I'm going to plug her in the system. So, because, you know, she's a school teacher, and she's a researcher, and she can definitely uh, tell me if I'm when you're wrong. I'm wrong, just like Emerald. And uh, if she can look up some facts or whatever. So Cheryl and Cheryl Diane, whatever her name is, is going to butt in. So, um, and... Uh, She's my wife, so she's probably not going to hold back anything and say, dude, you're wrong. Shut the hell up. Here's the right answer, you know? So it's going to get fun. It's going to get really, really fun. <laughs> I, I know she does do the research, though. Mm -hmm. She reads, yeah. like, all the books. Yep. Oh, she's on top of her game. Yeah. Hey, are you really going to make her head even bigger than it is, you guys? Knock it off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um, UFO sightings. We had one last week here in Fresno, and the guy called me on my... Oh, you guys are waiting for that phone number. Here it is. Area code 559-287-8367. One more time. 559-287-8367. The last four numbers represent the letters UFOS. Do not call yet. Do not call yet. I Just will not answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That is my 24-hour paranormal hotline. used to be a UFO hotline, but it's now a paranormal hotline. I get calls on that thing all the time. I would prefer that you call me during the day when I'm not sleeping, but if there is a massive sighting or a massive paranormal situation going on in the early morning hours or late at night, then go ahead and call me and inform me of the situation. I was uh, getting into bed probably about 10, 30, 11, and a phone rang, and it was Michael Gonzalez, his dude, can you see it? There's three objects in the sky, and I said, no, I can't. I, you know, I was up upstairs in our, uh, we have a two-story house upstairs looking out the window. I couldn't see of all the trees in the way, so he was able to take some photographs, and he sent them to me, and I'm going to show those to you right now on, um, on live stream. See, I, I went outside when you posted that, and it was actually foggy. Oh, they, see, it wasn't foggy. House. It wasn't foggy at all. I couldn't see nothing. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead without us. I'm going to go ahead and post. Only the other day, like day before yesterday, uh -huh. uh, my family was outside, and they all come running in, and they said they seen an orange orb mm -hmm. go straight up. You know, and it which was, way? Uh, it was west west of us uh -huh. and and it was going straight up what i me and my son christian oh by the way <laughs> i got some slack yesterday at the very end of the show when the lights were dim and the mics were still lit, lit i said no christian <laughs> people got offended thought i meant no christians oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> my son came in the studio and he was going to do something in front of the camera his name is christian you guys all right and i said no Christian. My mic was still on. <laughs> so people thought I was against Christians. Hello. 
Aren't you Christian? Yeah, I'm Catholic. So oh, yeah, same thing. same thing. So you guys know I'm not against Christian. I just was <laughs> telling my son, no Christian. People are going, oh, did he really mean that? How and I was dare like, you. oh my God, you guys, so I really. And he likes to get things in front of the camera like, was it last week during the break they had their monkeys and stuff? Oh my in front God. Of the they're, yeah, they're, and I slapped them. So, I think he thought he was going to do it again. Yeah, and that's when I said, no, Christian. <laughs> and I was, oops. So that's pretty funny. So, okay, what I'm showing you right now on the video is uh, the three objects that Michael caught on. And he took, took a picture with a cell phone, and then he texted uh, it over to me, okay? See, now that's a really good picture for a cell phone. That is a good picture for a cell phone, all right? Uh, and then he said it, they, they were moving, and just uh, they pretty much disappeared. Uh, he took one more photograph. I'm going to go ahead and show that to you right now. Um, that one is that one. I'll show you this one. And this one is another one. Just uh, So I asked him right off. Okay. I got, dude, are they Chinese candles? And he said, no, because they're moving and then they would stop. And then they would form uh, a different tri you know, formation and they would move again and stop. Chinese candles don't do that, guys. And they're the wrong color. Okay. So, uh, we, you know, what he got, he doesn't know because they just disappeared. So, um, uh, um, you know, they are UFOs, unidentified flying objects. That's what he witnessed. That's what I posted on my wall. And there you go. Yeah, see, in the city, you can't, you can't even take pictures of stars with your phone. No. You know what I mean? I've tried and tried. You, it's too you bright. You cannot take a picture. You can see it good with your eyes, but your cell phone will not. Uh, why? People are saying those are stars? No, no, I'm oh, just, oh, oh. I'm saying, you know, okay. before they even say it. Oh, those aren't stars. You know. They're it, moving. Yeah. They're, well, I mean, you can't take pictures. Try it one day. Go in the city, oh. go out in with street lights and everything and take a picture of a star and even the moon even. Right. Try to take a picture, a good picture of it. It'll be. A, won't happen. That won't happen. Right. So these yeah. things obviously were not way up in the, in the, you know, space. They were really low and they were moving. So. So, okay, um, that's the stuff that's happening here in Fresno. And, you know, it's happening all over the world, guys. But, you know, we yeah, have people is. who actually monitor the skies here in the central San Joaquin Valley where we live. And fortunate for me, I've had this phone number going over 10 years, guys. And I've had a lot of people call me on this phone. Um, I had, also on Friday, um, while I was working, somebody called me uh, out of Ohio. And I called him to see if he could come on tonight instead of next week. When he, him and his buddies, he's fifty. And he's about 50 years old now. And when they were like 21, 22, they were out by a golf course and they saw something on a tree. He described it and he said, dude, it was a gargoyle with wings. Cool. And I was listening to him and, you know, he, I can tell he was telling the truth because he was just, you know, he has never told anybody ever about the story. And because of our show, you know, he said he wanted to give us a call and tell him what he saw. So tell those to us what he saw. So I said, dude, you are calling in and you are telling everybody what they saw because um, other people might have seen what he saw in a different part of the world, you know, at the same object. But, you know, he said, I, I try to, you know, distinguish what it was and it, what he could describe the facial features and the ears and the face and... He said it was a gargoyle. It was yeah. a four-foot gargoyle. <laughs> and they looked at him, and his buddies ran, and he was memorized by it looking at him because he was trying to look on the floor to find something to throw at it. And you can tell that whatever it was on the tree um, knew what he was trying to do, trying to find something to throw at it, and it gave him a look like, you better not. And then he went... <laughs> and he was Me out. too, man. So that, been... those are the kind of stories that, oh my God, I love because I, I could tell. Uh, I get a lot of phone calls. I talk to a lot of people and you know which ones are lying and which ones are telling the truth. And this guy here is, in, is uh, you know, you can tell. So, all right, let's continue on. Um, was it uh, paper here? Um, the Fresno Bee. And this was on the 26th, which was the day after Christmas, which is a Friday. Put out um, in the uh, opinion section of the Fresno. No, actually, I take that back. It is uh, on the on the um, the actual front, the actual main section of the Fresno Bay, and the back page. It said 2014. A look back. 
And on the top right hand corner, I was working and my wife took a snapshot with her phone and she sent it to me. Well, I'm gonna post it right now on the screen so you guys can see it. Uh, where is it? And it would be right here. All right, you know, um, I believe, and not trying to be big headed or anything, but you know, Alan and myself and Paranormal Central, um, we, we are, I'm gonna say putting Bigfoot on the map. I mean, we are doing a lot to really publicize Bigfoot. I mean, we are, among other paranormal subjects. And when I saw this in the Fresno Bee, <clears throat> and granted, they're making fun of, uh, you know, they broke up the state of California into six sections. And if you're looking right now, the top section, they're saying Bigfoot, which is true. I mean, that's where a lot of the Bigfoot sightings are. Um, but why would they come up with the name Bigfoot? You know, why not? They, I'm sure they could have found another name to put there, but they chose Bigfoot. And we're Bigfoot's food. You notice that? Where we're at, we're Bigfoot's food. Right. Yeah. And, 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 you know, the Bigfoots are coming down to the central part of the valley. And like for all those who heard the show last week with J.C. Johnson, you know, the Bigfoots are in your own backyard. Yeah. You don't have to go up to the mountains anymore, you guys. It's just, you have to know what to look. You have to be very observant. Know the sounds that come around you um, and know what to look for. And that's what we do when we go, you know, around on the bottom of the riverbeds and and the bottom of the foothills. We know what to look for uh, as far as looking for Bigfoot. Uh, and we here in the central part of California supply a lot of food to the world. We are. The the food basket I think of the world I, of, the, of the United States I know that for a fact because we have a lot of produce a lot of vegetables I mean we have it all here the Bigfoot love what we grow here and that's why they come down so low so does everybody else yeah so um, that's why we have a lot of Bigfoot action here guys is because of the food that we have uh, oranges and apples you know Bigfoot love that not saying that there are not a lot of that where they are in the northern part of you know of California but we have it all here and I would just found it really interesting that they marked the top of that in the Fresno Bee of all places you know Bigfoot they used the word Bigfoot guys you know 10 years ago you would they, you would have never heard that I, you know in a major newspaper like this that serves you know millions of people you would have never heard that but now it's like well, when people think Bigfoot they think Northern California mm -hmm. you know I mean like you know that I mean that's what everybody thinks right. anyways yeah they don't they don't think of around here they're like so there's a there's a Bigfoot up there like one Bigfoot <laughs> Not no. There's a bunch of Bigfoots all up and down the state. Right, and but for a newspaper, um, yeah, that's weird. You know, for for the people who put on the newspaper, I don't know what you call them. The, not the publicists, but uh, uh, you know, the people who put the newspaper pieces together every day. For him to come up with the word Bigfoot, it's just it, it, that doesn't happen very often. So, I it, you know, like like Emerald was saying, Bigfoot now is the end thing. Everybody's talking about Bigfoots and UFOs and ghosts because it's the in thing to do now. I mean, if you don't talk about them, then and you better know your stuff because if somebody comes up to you and start talking about Bigfoot, then you better know you about your Bigfoot or people are going to go, you know, what? And they're going to turn away and walk away. The dude, you got to get into this stuff, man. <laughs> they said water. There's no water. That well, is a I, you joke. know what? Um, yeah. Let me put that back. The reason why... Um, is that, the I mean, water because of the recent rainstorm that we just had I think because it rained like crazy up in that area and that's why and I think that's why they put water there so anyway and, and matter of fact those where all the reservoirs are I think Sacramento area true yeah and I think that's yeah. why they have the water there the big giant rivers American River Sacramento River right so okay last week we were talking with J.C. Johnson about the Four Corners about the Skinwalker Ranch on how somebody came in and purchased a lot of the property there at the Skinwalker Ranch. Yep. His name is Bigelow, all right? And he's into the aerospace, uh, he's an aerospace engineer, and he has money, and um, obviously he's into UFOs, because I told you guys that this guy built 
some buildings and uh, you know uh, there at the Skidwalker Ranch. Right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one of the buildings that he built because because <laughs> um, you're it's going to blow you away on 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 what um, okay there it is okay there's a Bigelow building. And if you notice over here on the uh, top right hand corner, he has the emblem of an alien. All right, that is at the Skinwalker Ranch area, the uh, Bigelow Enterprises. All right, um, all their all their guards have it on their hat I'm too. Gonna, yeah, I'm gonna there are actually all their employees. What I'm going to show you is I'm going to show oh, you yeah, there it is. the patch the on their caps, on their baseball cap that all the security guards wear. Is this? This is the patch. This is this is for real, guys. I'm not making this up. Go Google it. This is. I'm not making this this up at all. Right now, if you were to, when you notify MUFON on a sighting, it goes to this guy first because he purchased MUFON. All right, and uh, he gets all of the, um, all of the reports and all of the good reports. So, uh, yeah. Um, what does he do? Is he like some kind of contractor? You no, know, like um, well, you know, he. I think he's building um, a rocket ship of some type. Mm -hmm. That, uh, and I think that's what he's doing. Um, but obviously, he's into alien technology for him to really publicize this. I mean, you can only tell. Uh, obviously, he purchased MUFON uh, because I think. When now, from what I understand, also that a lot of the airports around here, if you call them to report a sighting, they will instruct you to call Bigelow Enterprises or Aerospace and uh, t to fill them in on your sighting. So, what's the matter? I was just feeling cold air, like you know, move. I felt that cold air right now, too. It, I it, know the wind's not blowing, but all of a sudden it was like a breeze just yeah, came. That's through. weird. So Emerald's not breathing so hard over there. We're talking. <laughs> and um, so, yeah. So this guy is into the alien technology. I think he's waiting for, and I think it's not the first time, but it's probably happened where an alien craft has crashed someplace. And and uh, this guy probably tries to go and intercept it before the military does. I really do. I mean, this guy. I mean, come on. Look at that alien head up there. <laughs> well, maybe he does do that. Oh, I, I know that's what he does. I know that's what he. I, I'm pretty sure he has like helicopters on standby with cranes and the whole nine yards. And if it, you know, if a craft goes down and he gets a report of it first, he's gonna go get it. So he'd be like the first guy on the scene because he gets the first calls, and then he only tells the government what he wants to tell them. Oh yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. So, all right. Um. Some other stuff here that I want to show you. Um, let me show you really quick the location where we're at because obviously we're at the end of the year so I'm just like I said I'm just going to show you guys some stuff here um, we are when I say at the very beginning of the show that we are broadcasting live from the bottom left hand corner of the Nevada Triangle we most certainly are and I'm going to give you a picture of the, of the Nevada Triangle and I, and I think this pretty much gives away why we get a lot of excitement here here is California Fresno Fresno California and not too far from us are very popular locations where I believe testing is going on and they're, you know, building or back engineering, whatever, Lockheed and all those guys I believe have secret bases. I mean, we have Area 51 and we have, you know, China Lake. And it doesn't show China Lake on here, but China Lake is right over here. It's not too far away from us. Um, and, uh, and then we have also the Moore Naval Air Base, which you don't see, which is right underneath Fresno. So I believe back when I started doing this, a lot of the crafts coming from Area 51 were flying right over the mountain range and coming over to Fresno and te testing them over Fresno and see what they can get away with. They would fly very low over homes. Um, you know, we, I, I'd get a lot of calls. People would see these things. And there were, you know, black triangles, mostly black triangles, very large black triangles sometimes too. We're talking about the size of aircraft carriers, guys, very large that would fly and hover over certain parts of the central San Joaquin Valley. And, and that includes 
uh, little towns around Fresno. Um, in Sanger and Fowler, Del Rey, Parlier, all those little towns. Uh, but what's also weird is that, you know, we also get a lot of Bigfoot activity, a lot of ghost activity, weird creatures running around. Uh, we got all that here in Fresno. Um, and, you know, we're still trying to figure out why. You know, we still don't know why. Um, and that's why we're doing this. Maybe we'll never know why. But, man, we're getting a lot of cool reports, guys. Uh, you know, like JC was talking to us last week. You know, monsters are for real. All right. Um, and I don't care if you don't believe in monsters but we do have them and they're flying overhead and they're running around you know 10 foot tall hairy creatures are running around the valley floor and people are looking and witnessing these things and you can't tell me that that these people are hallucinating because they're not all right yeah, I, th I think i was the other night you know i got i was telling you i get woke up in the middle of the night come get me you know right and I put on C two C on the radio, and and there was a they were, had a caller that was talking about the Tahoe area and things flying around, you know, and that's inside that triangle too. Sure is. And they he only the guy was saying that he thinks that, or he's been told there's underground base over there in the mountains, and I was thinking, man, I bet it's connected to. The ones that we have here, I, I think they're all connected. Every, every, you know, everything inside that triangle, all these bases, Area Fifty One, all the places are all connected and, and I by think tunnels. Right. Um, I placed a video. I'm going to continue talking. I'm gonna. Well, they, they, I later on, you know, I was reading, you know, looking about tunnels under under California, and actually. Um, I came across a map that has like a network of tunnels all across the United States and was reading some of the stories and I had I had posted like a few days ago about this guy that was talking about making a tube like a vacuum tube instead of a bullet train and everybody was going to ride inside this vacuum tube right well they already have it in these tunnels I mean I, w I was reading these articles that go back to the 70s and these guys were um there they say that there's these tubes all connected to these bases and everything and and uh they're all vacuum tube things there, there was know, a like show or whatever. There, there was a show on tv um i know somebody posted it a long time ago where they had where you sat in these vacuum tubes and cars and whoosh yeah. take off right I think all that is, mm -hmm. is valid and it's in ex existence right now as we speak I mean there's no way I, I, I believe all that um, I want to play you some audio of a video that's on YouTube can I do that I think so okay. I don't see why not okay. and I want you to hear uh, this guy who's giving a lecture about underground bases I'm going to let you hear it here it is I think the only I think the only like mess with this on music but Okay, now why isn't it going? All right, that's weird. Hold on. Yeah, I mean, no. there, there's so much stuff on underground bases. It's not, it's like L.A. There is so much <laughs> uh, people that talk about these underground and like all the tubes all go to LA from all over, like from Colorado. And okay, here we go. Is that guy talking about the there same thing? There are four aerospace covert facilities. This is what we call the aerospace connection in the Antelope Valley and also the San Joaquin Valley. Rockwell in the San Joaquin, Lockheed, McDonnell Douglas, and Northrop in the Antelope Valleys. And these operations are. Ex okay, well. The San Joaquin Valley is us, guys, and that's Rockwell, and that could be anywhere. Uh, you know, I noticed a lot of experimental aircrafts coming out of Lemoore Naval, Naval Air Base. I wouldn't be surprised if that's where they are, but there, there's a Rockwell here in the valley someplace where, I don't know, I wish I did. I, I looked for that. I, I read an article about it, about that Rockwell. Mm -hmm. and I think it's here in Fresno someplace. 
well, it very well could be. <laughs> I think it's really, it's, I think it's right here someplace. We may have stumbled um. on it. And, <laughs> and I think not, it's here. you know, not know for sure. Right. I think it's here someplace. So, um, um, I noticed they quit parking planes over there. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're looking planes with no markings, very large white planes from Japan. Um, yeah, well, because obviously we are now aware of our surroundings, especially me, who, who works right near there. But I can tell you that if they are coming in, they're coming in late at night and leaving early in the morning before I drive out there. Well, they're putting them in that big, huge hangar. That too. That could be. I, I, I know that. I'm leaving, at, you know, and I go from here to my house, I drive down Clovis Avenue and they have all the lights on in there. And I don't know. I somebody was telling me they paint them. Yeah, they they, they them, no. They you know. build helicopters at the one at Dakota and Peach. That what you're talking about? Where the helicopter? No, at? Clovis Avenue, right across okay, from. So you're talking the new one they just built? No, it's a big old huge. That big huge. Oh, that one. There were people were oh. saying, oh, they paint the planes in there, but only there was some unmarked. Oh, see, I haven't big, really huge been jets parked in there, and they'll be in there like one day. Mm -hmm. And then, then I'll drive, like, the next morning, I'll drive by it's to gone. see. Yeah, and there's nothing there. I'm going to have to keep my eyes open on that one. And I mean one. big jets. Yeah. 727 in size. Uh, well, somebody know. said that supposedly we have, here at Fresno, the contract to replace the tires on the jetted airplanes from Area 51. That's what I heard from somebody. All right. Um so if they do come in, obviously that now they are coming in during the night when I'm not observant enough, <laughs> when I'm asleep. So um, There is, like I go out around 3 or 4 in the morning, and there is a lot of activity at the airport with jets taking off. Like the other night, I was out there, it was early, maybe about 11.30, mm -hmm. and I could, I, I used to hang out at the airport as, as a auxiliary of the Air Force. And when you're standing on the the actual tarmac and something takes off, you can hear you can hear the actual um, afterburners, you know, popping when they take off. I could actually hear that from my house the other night. They were ripping the jets are wow. ripping out of here about eleven thirty or twelve. No, wow. and and usually they don't. Um, not that time, not that yeah, late. Not unless no. um, not unless they're. Uh, been authorized to go in search of what's in the sky on the west coast. But I never hear the. I never could hear the afterburners hmm. for that long. They were way off, you know, and I could hear it really good. It was right. interesting. So, <laughs> um, I um, again, I get a lot of stuff posted on my web on my uh, Facebook wall, and I go look at other people's walls too because I try to give you guys the latest information, the latest news on paranormal stuff. There was a article that someone placed, and it was about the penile gland, and um, and we have talked about that here on the show. And for those who don't know, um, I think I have a picture here. I'm going to show you. I changed my toothpaste. Did you? Yeah. Wow. Hmm. And it's, uh, I'm going to narrow in on this. Um, for those who don't know about the penile gland, back in the days. They say that the penile gland is is our third eye. All right, um, and what I mean what I mean by that, um, Egyptian days, you know, they worshipped or they actually had symbols of the third eye. Right now, what I'm doing is I'm showing you a, a photograph on the on the penile gland, and the penile gland is sort of kind of right here in your forehead, but go in deep, right in the middle someplace. Like and if in you, the center it, of your brain. Yeah. So if you so if you would cut your head in half, <laughs> starting I guess um, I guess down the, in the middle between your eyes, you would cut into the penile gland, and they're and they're showing you right there the penile gland where it's at. Mm -hmm. But if you notice that when you cut your brain in half, it sort of resembles the third eye, eye of Horus. And you guys all know that symbol if you are into the Egyptian symbolisms and all that kind of stuff. There it is right there, all right? Um, it's just kind of odd and weird that the simil similarities are pretty dang close. 
So let's talk about that. now. It the really reason why does I, look like it. I mean, there it is. I mean, there it is right there. I mean, it does. Now the reason why I'm bringing this up is uh, is actually the ABC News here in Fresno did a, a news story on it of all people in the penal gland that a lot of people who have massive headaches and they've had them forever and they've you know gone to doctor after doctor after doctor and they can't figure out why you're having these headaches well they find out that these people and I'm not saying everybody has these but on the penile gland itself these people have cysts on them and that's what's causing the headaches all right um, now again the reason why I'm bringing this up is that we talk about the third eye here a lot we do um, and that and the reason why Emerald brought up also the toothpaste is we believe our government even the, the the religions of the world especially the Vatican they know about the third eye uh, the, I think the Vatican the penal gland there are symbolisms that the, the Vatican have uh, like a small pine cone they use uh, on on different murals and and I believe on 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 the scaffolds that uh, that the Vatican use or not the Vatican but the Pope or one of the bishops or they, they it has the penal gland of a small pine cone that they use as a symbolism it's on that staff and um, and it's like okay ooh, I mean the, there's something very important that we have up in our head that our government of the world the elite does not want us to figure out how to use and and you know we've been taught we talk about that here a lot trying to figure out okay what is the penal gland for and a lot of people say it's the third eye um, you know back in the days of the hippies in the 60s you know people would um, would do drugs a lot and THC and a lot of people when when the people would would be on these drugs. You know how they would be tripping out and seeing weird shapes and colors and the you know other possible just things that they could not describe. Well, they would say that by taking these certain drugs, it would open up that penile gland. It would allow you to see into other dimensions. Uh, and you know, uh, what if that is all true? What if the governments like Monsanto um, and the fluoride business? Now you guys don't know what what if you we don't know if you guys don't know what we're talking about on the fluoride. Um, we think that certain foods that we intake are calcifying the penile gland, and that is a lot of the time. Okay, when babies are born to a certain age like three or four like our son Christian he used to see things at a younger age yeah but now okay I mean I want to put it in perspective a little bit like this is something I think about the okay the government just started doing it around the 50s somewhere in there right doing what uh, adding to the water okay. and I mean and then you had your big corporations you know putting canned food and doing you know making these things like big production before that everybody made their own they're drinking well water um but they weren't enlightened you know what i mean like we were we were horse and buggy for ever since the days of of the picture that you got right here what is different today or what is happening today that they have to do that to us. See, like, it, I think we're coming into a time there you go. when something's coming and they can't hide it. They're not going to be able to. It's it's like they've known for a long time. And th this kind of stuff that you got on here talks about it. And they found it. And they may have even been using the technology. So let's say whatever's coming this way, um, as it gets closer, it's going to turn stuff on. 
maybe. Exactly. And everybody is getting more sensitive. And uh-huh. ha- like, I think everybody's waking up more. Like, w- when we first started doing this, everybody would, n- they were not awake. No. You know, we, we actually have been opening up a lot of eyes. And, and thank you for your emails, you guys. We are getting hundreds of emails yeah. and texts on Facebook from everybody explaining that. We are opening up your eyes for people who used to sit back and 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 be brainwashed by what's really going on out there. Stuff like what we're showing you now, where probably people are probably going, "What?" <laughs> I mean, you know, we're probably blowing people away because you probably had no idea you even had a penal gland. All right, and its purposes. Well, you know, we're ho- we're we're trying to teach you guys and show you guys that there is more to it than waking up every morning and going to school and going to work, coming home, having dinner, picking up your kids and going to sleep, doing it over again the next day for 365 days a year. A lot more going on, guys, all right? So like Alan was saying, maybe there is something coming up. Now, matter of fact, last night, and and I don't get to watch much TV, all right, guys, okay. And last night, Cheryl Diane, whatever her name is, my wife was watching Thor, the movie. Okay, that was a good movie. The first, okay, the first one about how all the planets were uh, um, uh, aligning. uh, What's the word that they use? Oh, Uh, I haven't seen it. Okay, um, it. Are you sure that's not the second one? No, that was the first one, where um, the hammer, we throw down the hammer on Earth, and he's with the. Oh, and he was trying to pick it up, and and nobody can pick it up. Yeah, that's the first one. Now the second one. I had to go to sleep because I was tired last night. So I was like quarter of away and I didn't get to see all of it. But he's saying every 5,000 years, you know, all the planets align. That's the second one. That's all, well, they mentioned it in the first one, though. But no, so maybe the second one is when it actually happens, though. Yeah. Okay, well, no, the first one is when they're actually bringing that. That's like in the very beginning, right? Is that what when, you're talking yeah, about? When, yeah, um, when... Um, like when Thor is chat is, when Thor that. is talking to what's her face um, the the star of the show the girl the nine, the scientist, nine realms the the, the, the nine realms thank you um, other dimensions you know when these planets align which align every five thousand years you can go from one realm to the next right. one dimension to the next dimension because the planets are aligned a certain you know certain way uh, and that's what people are saying is happening now like possibly even 2015 with planet nibiru and if they said every 3500 years though hmm. planet nibiru comes around that's right. that's what it was like 36 3600 or 3600 no. 30 yeah. or 3600 3500 yeah. 3600 and uh, but in the thor the movie it's 5000 years for the convergence i think it's the right word oh. convergence is that right it just hit me right now um and uh, the nine planets, you know, align a certain way, uh, and you can jump from from one realm to the next, you know. From and, and they used portals, yeah. you know, <laughs> all that, guys. Um, it's like when he, like in that one movie where he broke that rainbow bridge. Or yes, whatever it and, was. and that prevents him from not going. Yeah. That just uh, not allow them to go to the next dimension because right. that was the actual road. Uh, and, and he used Rainbow Bridge, yeah. and you know Cheryl Diane would, you know she, you know she's looking at me, and we're going, whoa, you know, because if you're not into what we talk about here, all those little words and phrases that they use are starting to make sense. Yeah. They're like you know we told you guys out there what you guys are now witnessing on TV, and in TV shows and in movies, I believe they're conditioning us little by little by little. Um, so a lot of the stuff that they were saying last night, we were going, whoa, you know, they're using portals, they're using realms, they're using travel from one location to the other location when they all uh, um, line for this convergence. Uh, and it's like, okay, is that happening soon? Is that what our governments are, are, are preparing for? Is it maybe, is it maybe this little... This little gland that you it's, got it's, showing right here gonna, actually worked back then, and then now, what is it, maybe ten thousand years later, somewhere in there, mm-hmm. it's starting to work again. Work again, but they're giving us. Or they knew it was going to start working right? again, and they started putting stuff in the thing, and in, in, in the water, and the foods, mm-hmm. 
to, to calcify it, to prevent us from using it, to prevent us from actually seeing that other realm. Excuse me. Yeah, see that you, other realm. You, I mean, when you think about it, for me, it, it's, um, and I, I don't know, like, ever since I was a kid, this tripped me out. You know, you I sat and would listen to my great-grandpa. You know, I'm just a little kid. And, he, and they're talking about hitching the horses and plowing the ground with the horses and the, you know, and all that stuff. And and then we're, you know, turn around and look on the TV and see him walking on the moon. Or talking on these little things. And Douglas Stingley, uh, who's a great fan of the show, uh, is very much into uh, Rottenberry of Star Trek. And a lot of the stuff that he envisioned in Star Trek is now is now here. We're yeah. actually using it. You know, the flip phones, um, uh, all of that. Yeah, they call them communicators. Yeah, all of that. Yeah. You know, um, he. Uh, we are now using it. So, um, a- again, these people. You know. Yeah, but what is it? What What is different today? Out of all those hundreds of years, they call the Dark Ages or whatever. All of a sudden, we're in the What Age? In the last probably since my the, kids were born, the electric, on, like, things age, have um, went like blistering, blazing. Fast. Right, and, and the question is now: Where, how are we getting all this? Um, in the '80s, if you would have said you're going to set a camera up and sit in front of it and stream to the whole world, everybody would look at you like you're crazy. And that is not that long ago, right? So I mean, uh, things are going, moving at such a fast pace. And how did they know? What I'm saying is, how did they know to start putting this junk in the and doing the GMOs mm-hmm. and how did they know they knew something? Well, right. And, and, and for those who um, are still don't understand the, the fluoride, we believe that fluoride and the other stuff like sodas and that I drink and I shouldn't, but I, I'm addicted to it, um, <laughs> that it's calcifying the penile gland and it's turning it off. And when this ever happens, this, this alignment um, – you know, people, certain people are going to be able to maybe do stuff that is very magical. Um, so, go. I thought you were going to say something. No? Well, come on. Say something. Emerald's quiet over there. It's on her phone. What are you doing? Talking to your boyfriend? Yeah. Nah. Shut up. Yeah, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> At least she was honest. Yeah. <laughs> she could have said no. So, uh, so I, you know, um, I... I, th- I Every year that I've been doing this show, I always said, no, oh, next year is going to be exciting. Next year is going to be exciting. Um, well, it has been. It ha- yeah. yeah it, no, has. It, it has been getting exciting on what we're doing here. Yeah. But what I mean exciting is very paranormal exciting. Like, um, what's the word I want to use? Very uh, unbelievable. Like something is going to happen. Unbelievable. Like a new planet is going to come into the solar system. We're going to see it. Uh, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm tripping on lizards. Okay, now all the research that I've been doing, um, this reptile lizard theme is, it's unbelievable. I mean, it's in the cartoons. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're, uh, um, they have dragon tails. I mean, and then when you start researching, even Pokemon just. Pokemon. Right, right. I love me. Some oh my Pokemon. god! Like, okay, now you're talking about using TV to, um, what do you call it? Uh, condition. Condition. Uh huh. They have been conditioning the heck out of us on lizard or reptile. I mean, oh my god! I mean, if well, dragons are another big thing too. Like. So I don't know, maybe like if we are sided with one, we'd be more adapt to be with the dragons type. Yeah, but it, like I th- when I'm researching, it's talking about like DNA sharing with these things. Hmm. You know, and I, and I I don't got all of the qu- I don't got the answers yet, you guys, but I mean, I'm digging in it and it it seems like there was like DNA mixing or something and even that might even have been why the flood happened, like the big giant flood of Noah, because mm-hmm. the uh, these. Where's my water bottle? 
these <laughs> reptoids were like so mixing oh. their DNA with everybody and mixing it all up, and it right. made the aliens mad, and the aliens it, you, you know, know you know people. sent a big old giant meteor down, you know, and right. smashed everything, you know. To you know, I don't know, uh, you know, you know, we're such uh, we're nobodies here on Earth. You know how minute we are. We're, uh, you know, yeah. we're just we're just a speck in the solar system. And oh and God. people who I speak to who want information on our existence here on planet Earth, um, you know, I tell them, you know, we're absolutely no one's here uh, compared to the to the, the, the universe. Um, and it, and it's and it's hard to comprehend. And I'm going to show you. And, and there, done- there's people though that they think the whole universe revolves around them. You know, I, I ran into them in the parking lots of like <laughs> the mall. You know, and you you accidentally get in their space. You know, and all of a sudden you're you are uh, under attack. You know? right. When I'm showing you guys right, okay. And and we've spoke about this before, but I, the reason why I want to bring it up over and over and over again because this just tells you that we are absolutely no ones on earth and, and let me let me explain the picture that i have on the screen All right um i don't know several years ago the uh, hubble telescope pointed its telescope out into the universe found a little inch by inch spot that was totally black and started taking pictures on that area for uh, like a week straight okay and then what they came back and they found this and I have it posted on my, right now on live stream. You can watch it right now. This photograph. This is like a square inch, right? It's a square inch out in universe. I don't know how many trillions of miles away or whatever. Okay, and you guys are probably going, "Oh, look at all the pretty little stars." Well, those aren't stars, you guys. All right, each one of those bright objects that you see is a galaxy <laughs> with about a billion planets in that galaxy. Okay, have I blown your mind away yet? All right, have I blown you away? So what you are, now this is only an inch in, in, in space that this Hubble telescope was taking photographs of. An inch, okay. I, you know, when I first heard this and saw this, it just, it's mind boggling. I couldn't comprehend it, because you can't. You I mean, can't. I, I've been, lately, okay, the, the, new, the astronomers right now are talking about, and I think I even saw it on Art Bell website even, um, they're saying that maybe that's all a holograph. It, the only real part is our solar system, and everything else is a holograph. A holograph. Then but who? Only, then who's doing the holograph? Then see, yeah. that's the big question. <laughs> okay, but if it was a holograph, who would have thought to put in the space? You know, did they know? The, you know, yeah. You're shooting this thing for a whole week in a dark spot that you know there's nothing there, and you think that that was the end of the universe, right? Right. right. And then all of a sudden, all those right there, what, a billion galaxies? or you know, I, I, A lot of galaxies there. And in each galaxy, you have billions of, of, of yeah, planets. Trillions yeah, trillions. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and that's just an inch out there. So if you guys think we're the only ones out there in the universe you're absolutely out of your freaking mind yeah, that's for sure okay Smoky i'm telling crack. you that right now because we are no one's here i think we're um i think we are i, I used to uh, we're I insignificant insignificant but we're also here as test subjects i believe we're, we were put here for a reason i don't know what it is great i feel special now why I was being sarcastic, Because you're, no, you're a nobody? Screw you. No, like we all are. No, we're all mean. nobodies. No, I'm going to say we're all nobodies. I mean, what I mean, what's our, What are we doing here? We're living, my friend. Yes, but there's there's, there's got to be more to it than that. There is. I there's actually more. believe there is. I mean, we're only here for a little while. Right. We weren't created to be here. Actually, at first, we were, we were created to 500 be years. immortal. Okay. Okay, we were we were created to be immortal. So you're talking like the movie Thor and all that, I right? Mean, and then somebody made immortal. a mistake, and then oh, we, they actually died. That's what the mother died on the first episode. Not, yeah, no, no, no. They just live like a gazillion lives lives right longer. Even like the the years. Egyptians. I was I was doing some research and and uh, in the kingdoms, the old kingdoms, 
of the Egyptians, that some of the kings lived 37,000 years. They were reigned for 37,000 years. You know, like, I mean, I can't, I can't grasp the numbers, but then all, where it all changed was after the flood. After the flood, everybody died after 80. You know what I mean? I mean, every, before that, everybody was living hundreds of years. Now we only live maybe 100 years. But I actually think that whatever life we go to next or dimension or whatever, mm-hmm. I don't think we die again. I think we live forever. I, I don't think we die. I, I think your consciousness or whatever, your you, whatever makes you, lives. Hmm. You know, And you leave. you might leave this flesh thing behind, but... You're con- like, and the only reason I even think that is because I died, right? And even before I died, I never really thought like that. But when I got on the other side over there, there was no time that you know, like no time, and there wasn't even a concept of time. And travel was at the speed of thought, and talking with people was all done by thought. There was no lip talking or you know mouth talking or whatever. There, there was no voice talking, and you knew everybody that was around you. You knew them, and they knew you. But it was weird, okay. But but I actually think we're going there, and and that's what we were really creative for. So what do you think, Emerald? I mean, being that you know you don't believe in higher power. No. <laughs> So, I mean, where do you think we go from here? Why are we, I mean, I want to hear your perspective. Anna. Well, I don't think the higher, well, I don't know. My thing is, like, God, the whole God complex thing never stuck out to me. Like, I don't know. Like, it's, I can't sit here and tell you because I don't know. Yeah, we don't know. My I don't whole even, thing no. is, like, I think we do whatever the hell we want. Again, yeah. no pun intended. Mm-hmm. Like, if I want to go scare the crap out of somebody, I'll go scare the crap out of somebody. Like, if we walk around here, that'd be cool too. But if we go somewhere else, by all means, or the whole like I've always like loved the idea of um, what's it called? I lost it. The R word, where you come back. Oh, reincarnation. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. Yeah, but why? I mean, why would I don't want to come back? I'd come back as a cat. See, like, like um, <laughs> if you if if the people lived in my body, they wouldn't want to. Well, no, I don't think you'd come back as the same. Well, you know what? I don't know because, you know, that whole thing with the movie stars and stuff, how they come, how that whole theory that they, like, they come back. You've seen the pictures of people from the past. Oh, I saw that picture. And then you've seen the art, the actors today and well, how they, they look. Well, they like say that, that, nev- that everybody has a double, a twin. All right. I mean, and you know how many millions and millions of people there are on this earth. There can't. There's got to be more than one looks like me someplace like, else. Like, I did some research on reincarnation, and, and um, just in the population today, there's six, seven billion people. Okay, and then when you when you figure out how many people say that lived in the last two thousand years or something like that, there's more people alive on the earth than there ever was born in the two thousand years. Yeah, that makes sense. So if there were, if it was reincarnation, where was everybody at? You know what well, I mean? No, no, no. I mean reincarnation doesn't have to be people, animals, plants mm, type maybe. thing. Cuz that whole thing with reincarnation If it could be ants, then that would name that it. That makes <laughs> sense, right? <laughs> yeah. Cuz no, there's a bazillion I, I, of them. Cuz animals have always seen in that type of area as a higher than people. Being 5 miles high looking down out a window, you know, and and I mean, they can't even imagine it. I mean, they, the highest they ever got was on top of a mountain or something. And, and then if they jumped, you know, three feet higher than that or something. But they they never went, like, when I went to Africa, it was 12 hours over the ocean. Yeah. You know, and you're looking out the window, and for hours, all you saw was water. Every It didn't matter which way you looked out the plane. It was water. And, you know... Now, so, we're in a weird time. Now, what about deja vu? That's interesting. You know what? I get that a lot. I know. I used I to get. get I used to get it. I used to get it when I was growing up. Like I don't know what it is. Like hmm. deja vu. Yeah. Or like in, from my dreams, like I'll have a dream about something, and then something happens. That or happened I'll, in I'll your like, dream. Yeah. Or like have you like 
I don't want to say vision because that has a weird connotation with people. But when, like, if I blink or at random times, something, like, completely random will pop into my head and I won't even be thinking about it. Like, the other day, um, I was on the freeway coming home from Madeira and I blinked. And I was like, what the heck? Because I saw you, you did what? fire. I blinked. You blinked. And then all of a sudden I see fire. I'm like, what? Okay, whatever. That was weird. I'm driving into town, and that's when that church was on fire. And I was like, holy crap. No way. Yes, I swear. Like, it was so weird. Oh, like, the police are going to be knocking on your door thinking it's huh. you. Yeah, I didn't do it. And oh, I, that know, would suck, huh? Because I'm an atheist. <laughs> well, it's kind of like all these Christmas movies that, you know, I've been watching with the wife and the, some of the grandkids. And, they, you know, they go in an alternate, like they bump their head, and then they're in a another dimension or else a uh, a ghost comes and grabs them and takes them into the future and the past and shows them you know everything and then they they come back all changed and before they're all bah humbug you know i mean it, oh it, it's been some weird stuff you know and I, I was you know how many movies christmas movies are like that i mean we must have watched like nine movies in the last two weeks and every one of them had that kind of theme you know really where the you know, bump their head. They and change for the better. Yeah, yeah. Every time they change for the better, you know. But only, they're, you know, they're, it was all paranormal. Right. Totally paranormal. And then this guy shows up in a sleigh with flying reindeer and everything. <laughs> no, and he's going to disappear. Paranormal. If everybody stops believing, he starts disappearing. You know, and one of them, right. he's even disappearing. He's looking at his hand. Oh, nobody believes in me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I used to have deja vu when... When I was in elementary school growing up and junior high, that's when I really had a lot of the deja vus. And, and I, w I would be at places and I'm going, man, yeah. I was just here. Um, I, but I don't have them anymore. I don't. Uh, I wonder. Well, now that you I got wonder, older? No. Hmm. No. I you know wonder. Neither do I. Now that, that's an interesting thing I never thought about. You know, it, it may be this whole penile gland has something to do with that. It could be because I, I remember riding the school bus and and have those or be at school sitting. Yeah. In okay. those times is when it happened. That's the when most. it happened to me too. Yeah. And now when we're older, it doesn't happen anymore. No. Oh. Hmm. Do you guys all have the same thing as far as deja vu? Did it happen when you guys were younger, and then when you guys got older, it stopped? Maybe. Huh. Yeah. Maybe. Ooh. I, you know what? I. There you go. This is why we talk out loud. Emerald. Deja vu. When was the last time? Oh, except the for other the, day. Well, yeah, yeah, and she's well, younger. Well, no, 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 no. That was more. That, that wasn't was a. Like, that wasn't yeah, a deja vu. That was but, a premonition uh, or something. Deja vu. What was it? Because I, in the dream, I was going to work and I got but, a no, but weird see, I, it's not. Call. It's not work. I'm. I'm. That you're, someplace, and all of a sudden you go. I've, I've been, been here. here before. Oh, that happens to me all the time. Like there's Still? just too much to count. Yeah. Oh, then you're weird. I know. Well, do you already know I'm weird? I know. Yeah, but no, she might still be young enough for that happens. To where? Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Because I can't, re I can't tell you what was the age that I stopped having day You know what it was? Like the main one that I remember was I was in Seattle and we were walking somewhere and that was my first time visiting my aunts in Seattle and I was like, why the hell does this look so familiar? And I had never been there before. Hmm. And I was like, hmm, it was weird. But that I was mean, like the I mean, there is some one. weird things like when you're, when you're talking about like deja vu like that little kid that was born and i think it was in somewhere over in the middle east or something and he started talking about the neighbor that killed him mm -hmm. in the village and and everybody was like oh yeah whatever whatever and then he took him to where where he, where he was buried and it was right there and then they're like well you know wow that's where you're buried. That wasn't long ago. They all remembered that, right? Oh, so he was, was saying, oh, wait, did, did, are you, yeah. did he take him to a cemetery per se? No, no. Or just a... No, a neighbor got mad and killed him. And then and then uh, he turned around and he goes, and that's the guy that killed me. Ooh. To the guy that was standing there. And, and everybody turned you know, on the guy. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're like, we're going to get him. you know. And, and is this true? And then the guy finally, he was not admitting it at first. But when the kid likes like there's the place where I was buried, that's the guy, you know, and did, told all this stuff. He's like, all right, all right, I did it, I did it. Wow. And they're even putting him in court, and and charging him for murder. 
Wow. See, I have the so, evidence. So, so they dug up them, found the body there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whoa. See, I don't know how that would fly here in an American court. I mean, because if he would never admitted it, I don't know if that would fly because that's based on... Just weirdness. Yeah. <laughs> Paranormal. Yeah, only, is that, how do you call that? Deja vu? Or did no, I think... No, that's I think an afterlife. That's a different... That's I mean, that's kind of that reincarnation Yeah, thing. that's like, whoa. Coming back because there's Weird been kids... stuff, though. That's huh? like souls. You know, people have mm. souls and... Well, there's kids here in America that go through that. Some of the, A lot of them are from our, our veterans that they come... I, I want to say they uh. come... I don't know how it works, but they're three-year-old, five-year-old kids who are like, oh, yeah... I died in a plane fighting, and they'll draw out like symbols and mm-hmm. stuff from the I wars. Know. There's people younger, probably the same age, that claim to died on the Titanic. So. And I wonder if like you, if they weren't like didn't get, like if there is some kind of maybe a little bit of reincarnation because you didn't, you didn't like elevate your. It could vibration, be vibration, like, you know, or your thought. Thoughts that that's that's a little, smart, but yeah. it could be like because you didn't live out your full life, oh. you live it out. I don't know. I'm just oh, shooting darts I see what you're here. Saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah. It's an interesting thing to talk about, though. Wow. <laughs> well, you know what? We it's are, interesting to like research it. Too. We are at 90 minutes, actually more past 90 minutes. So we're gonna take a little break, you guys, out there, so that way we can go and take care of business yeah, food. and maybe some munchies and some and smoke, drink, and take a break. So uh, we're gonna be gone for about seven, eight minutes, and uh, I'm going to leave you with Possessed Tranquility, our official house band. And I uh, will put their album on and uh, take a listen. And we and will be buy back. Buy the album. And buy the album. And we will be back in a bit. Okay, guys? Put a picture up. No, I'm just going to lower the light. But I have to cross the camera. You think you're so smart. Hiding from the ones who know you But we see everything In a sense never knew you
Man, I didn't know that the music was just overbearing. Sorry, guys. <laughs> and we're like, sorry, Keith. <laughs> Dude, that was like bad. I had no idea. I thought I left it and I thought it was right volume. Okay, we're back. Everybody Everybody took care of uh, their needs and Emerald is munching down on a grilled cheese sandwich over there. Oh, hold on. What? It's amazing. <laughs> It's a grilled cheese sandwich. Okay. I love grilled cheese. Um, and they're using their Christmas presents making grilled cheese. <laughs> <laughs> um, the one thing we haven't talked on uh, before we get into... Hold on. Uh, no, you have a Unfortunately, Jeff, I had a music gig at my house oh, tonight. It's so oh, so good, you guys. I wanted to <laughs> Uh, Man, you're making me hungry. Mm, you want some? <laughs> no. Throw a piece. Oh, we mouth. Or, 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 or. No. Oh. I get. I get to eat later after the show. That's. I got a date. Aww. Okay. All right. Um, we had another plane crash. Or is it a crash? Or was it a? I should take that minute. Let me rephrase that. Another plane has gone missing. Yep. Okay. Uh, that's three within a year and a half. And they happen to be now they're not. This one is not a Malaysian, or is it? it I know it's an it Asian is. air. It, it is. is. Wow. All right. What's going on? Any like, any uh, theories? Um, uh, this one might. This one might be a storm. A storm. Okay. Because the the last mm-hmm. thing the guy said was he he was asking for permission to go up in altitude, be, to get out of a storm. He wanted to go above it. So I mean, he could have. That one could have really been a or, storm. Or or the. Convergence is occurring. There's a portal opening in that area, and that plane went through that portal, just Good. like the other two. Where's my water bottle? I mean, <laughs> and it happened to be in that. Every time she says that, what? I'm going to What, duck, what were you going to throw something at me? Water bottle. I was. Why? That just sounds so far-fetched. I mean, considering <laughs> the stuff we've talked about, I'm oh. like, really? Well, <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, that's kind of, don't you think, all right. As of two years ago, a plane crash of that magnitude doesn't happen very often. No, no. Okay, it doesn't. These things and don't And they know fall. what happened. Yes. They tell you. And they tell you where the plane crashed, where is it? They retrieve the bodies, the parts. All right, here, a third plane now has is, is gone missing. That's it. Where are the 162 people from this plane now? Are they going to be able to find parts in the ocean like they should have been on the other two if they did crash in the ocean all right um body parts and cushions and luggage would be at this time a year and a half already should have been washing beach, on, shore. washing on yeah. shores yeah i guess okay the, you just don't disappear poof well, it's like that that one guy i don't know what show i was watching and I think he's been on three shows now where he was in a little Cessna in the Bermuda Triangle and he went into some kind of vortex and he flew a three hour flight in 30 minutes. You know, but he came, he lived, you know, he came out of it and everything. But he said it was kind of like electricity all over in a green glow around the airplane. Hmm. I mean, this is X Files stuff, guys. I mean, I what mean, if this it was, like... what if it was, remember our guest was it how many weeks ago? We had that one guest, and they were flying, and, and oh the, yeah, 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 the, the, yeah, and the UFO came up to the side. Yeah, and they all of a sudden they're in the plane, and they're flying along, and they're like, "Wow, look at all these UFOs all around the plane!" And then the next thing you know, they're waking up. The plane's in the hangar. Everybody's waking up. Nobody talks about it. Is like, what? Crazy, what if they yeah. just kept that one? Because he said the ship was big enough to. Take a plane yeah. that big. It, yeah, it, you're talking huge. So, um, I, mean, I mean, this. I mean, for a plane to disappear, you guys, and not find any parts of it is paranormal. It is kind of weird. It's paranormal. That should not happen. You should be able to find something, and they're not find anything. It disappeared. These planes disappeared. With with today's technology. They can find. They can it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, actually, if that went down and if that went down, the black box should be sending off a signal, automatic, without that, anybody doing at anything. At first, they thought it was a terrorist, and then the terrorist got into the cockpit and was able to turn it off and all this. I'm going, no, no, that ain't gonna happen. Um, you know, and then on top of that, the, I believe the first plane, and I don't know how true this is, but 
they were getting pings off of cell phones that people had. Right. You know, people now have cell phones. They could, you know, if they're going to crash um, prior or land in or crash into the ocean, I think one person would be smart enough to get on the phone really quick and call his loved one and say, yeah. hey, we just crashed. Or, you know what I'm saying? If you're so far out there, there's no cell oh, no towers. Cells. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, uh, well you know... It, you have, I mean, you just can't disappear and not find a part of an airplane. Sorry, I mean, Amelia Earhart is another thing, but was that was small. That, up, that was yeah. small. That was a very, very small plane back then. You know, they didn't have the radars like we do and the technology that we do to this day. We're talking 737s, 747s with 150 people on board. You know, um, everybody now has a cell phone, GPS tracking, black box. You know, they got backup after backup after backup for scenarios like this. I mean, they, they should at least, I mean, I know they could use the satellite to find your phone. Right. They don't need a cell tower. Okay, so, you know. uh, I, I don't know. Maybe, <clears throat> well, I don't know. We, we Now we just have to, <sighs> somebody should really take a look at these airplanes. And, I mean, we did. We talked about, I don't know, the first or the second airplane with the, um, the eight people on board who had the patent to that chip. Yeah. Okay, I don't know if that was the first one or the second one. Yeah, somebody said something about that on this one. Like, is it another Rothschild Is it? Is, it, is there somebody very famous on this particular airplane? Well, the, uh, the, the, the passenger list will come out here within the next couple of days. And then once that comes out, people will do their homework. And well, I think it was mostly... Um Oh, I forgot. But it was a majority of one um, culture. There were some South Koreans, uh, mm. a French who was the co-pilot, and then a British guy. Hmm. I don't think there were any Americans on that plane. Huh. But I, if I read it correctly, I think that's what it was. Okay, well, let's find out if there was anybody with significance on that plane that you mentioned. Uh, and let's see what happens. I mean, that, that's the other one, the North Koreans. You think they're going to shoot a rocket at us? No. Uh, I don't no. think so. They're out of the freaking mind that they do. Well, because it's, it's like, not to piss anybody off, but the whole little man <laughs> complex, like, he's probably this tall going up America who's like that. I mean, it's just you. Well, he said he was also going to bomb the White House. I'd like to see that happen. Okay, but. but you know what I mean? Like, we have so much more technology. We're so far ahead, mm -hmm. at least as far as we know, than they are. We freaking, I mean, most of the weapons they have is from us. That's true. Um, I, I And you know we're not selling them what we use today. No, no. We're selling them old junk that we don't even, that we could bomb easy or pop right in the air if we want. Yeah, yeah it's it's like taking a knife to a gunfight. You just don't do it. Right. Yeah. And, and again, he's just talking out of his, you know what. Uh, I, I, you know what, now, now the way things are looking, I don't know if <clears throat> North Korea had anything to do with the Sony hack. Yeah, I don't think so either. You know, I think it was all an inside job. Somebody who got fired. I think it may have just been promoting. You know what? People were thinking about that too. Because look at how much publicity that movie has gotten now because of it. Now, uh, even it, though the oh movie's man. complete crap. Now, and it, they've been they started bootlegging it like mm -hmm. immediately. Well, bootlegging is not going to get them money though. Yeah, okay. but it's publicity. It's publicity. Well, eh, um, no, they gave it out for free. Yeah. But okay. It, it brings. It, well, it creates it, revenue. It does. It really does. Okay. Well, and, and, it and, and somebody revenue. said, could this be the, um, uh, you know, the the world's famous hoax of all time, the, uh, the the famous hoax of all time? I mean, because, it, you know, if this was a Sony ploy to just do that, um, I heard Seth. With it, Seth Rogen. Yeah. Um, they gave him eight million dollars for this movie to do this movie. Wow. Okay, so that team ain't worth that much. <laughs> so uh, nobody's it, worth that. Uh, okay, much, so um, you know, <laughs> I am. how much did the movie? How much was the movie? I wonder how much did it cost to make it. Probably fifty million. I don't think it was. It, 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 it can't be that much. It can't be that much because there was no special effects. It wasn't like a you it know a monster crap. movie. Yeah, it was just you know set. You know, in just small settings where there was nothing really. To, so, yeah, um, I don't know. I don't know. W will we ever know? Maybe, but I, I, I don't think pieces of it, like where they're 
and it was crude. Mm-hmm. Really? <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't think Sony, <clears throat> if if they did this on their own and they are the ones who are behind all this, if it finally came out and people knew it was a hoax, would the people go back at Sony and say, screw you, I'm never going to see another movie again? No. Okay, exactly. You know, screw you, am I ever going to buy an Xbox or, or whatever, you know, they're good for Sony, you know, games or whatever? No. Um, they're going to go, ah, you got us. Um, so it could be very well a ploy to have people well, see I mean, it. Well, that's a really tasteless ploy. I mean, it got two governments going back and forth. And now we look like fucking, sorry, buzz me out. Um, <laughs> Beep. Bullshit. Right. Because, Beep. shut up. Because, I mean, we come off as this giant type bully accusing right. another yeah. country like, mm. you're doing this and da 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 when it's not even Well, then, that, it, then it's Sony's, if, if, if then if that could that's get, what th- happened. Then, then Sony can get in a lot of trouble. Or who's ever doing it. You know, there you is know, that could, anonymous. Could, could the government, well, Sony is... Japanese, right? I don't know. Who owns Sony? I think so. Okay, think then, is, yeah. um, you know, is this a ploy? Well, to, 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 is this a ploy to cause a, a world war? Uh, is it cause, you know, between two countries? Is well, that the only what reason is? I even ask? Is because I've been looking for the thing that they they're going to use to to not have the next election. <laughs> No martial and, law? Yeah. I mean Oh God. Let I swear once that happens, people are gonna be pissed. People no, it's not. He can't. You'd have so like the rioters now would look like nothing compared to what would happen. Man, the rioters haven't stopped either. Oh, it's they're so they're, full of crap. I can't re- stand it, it really is get, getting ridiculous. It's, it's yeah. complete BS. Well, uh, I think what would cause a martial law to occur is um not necessarily writers. I mean, we could the grid could no, go that's, down. It would make them look small. We would be up in arms. Yeah, yeah, but not if, like, what I was saying is like, what if it's just a big ploy, and the dude does send a rocket, and we don't shoot it down? You know what I mean? Like, what if he does, and and they and they say they did everything, but only now they have to put everybody under a curfew and martial law and all that. And that was the thing that did it. It was no. just the stupid no. little uh, oh, oh, oh. dude that they bought off in the first place, you okay. know, that he's just following their orders, the UN. So if yeah. North Korea, or what is it, North Korea, right? Yeah. If he were to send a, mess, a missile, uh, where would it likely hit? Is that the, the East Coast? I'm not sure. Maybe. But only I know that he has them. He, the ones he has can make it here. If we don't shoot it out, which we could, I'm thinking we could shoot it out. Man, uh, you know they can because Israel has their Iron Curtain, <laughs> and those guys have been lobbing missiles at them daily, and not one, hardly any of them hit in Israel because they've been shooting them if, out of the if sky. If it didn't get know. shoot da- shot down, that would be on our government for not doing its job. Yeah, and but only see they the what they've been like arming our cops and. I mean, like militarizing everything that they're getting ready for something. Oh, something, yeah. I'm just looking for what is it? Is it did they get the ra- Is it going to be like a combination of things, like the race thing, or is it going to be? Well, the media. You know, I mean, if we want to go into race, I like. I honestly don't care what color you are. Me I either. Don't. But the whole race thing, they're feeding that fire. Yeah, media, they are. Media, they show you what you want to see. And that goes for any media outlet. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've talked about Fox News on here, and I mean, that's 86% propaganda and lies and stuff like that. So they're going to feed you what they want you to think or how they want you it's to feel. It's kind of funny. That, like, you could watch the the white news or whatever where it feeds you mm-hmm. the stuff to get you mad at the blacks. Or you can watch the other news where they're feeding you the stuff to where you oh, be goes, mad at the goes, whites. It, you know? It's just ridiculous. And if people actually took the time and quit being primed by this news channel, it would be so much easier just to sit down and talk to people. Yeah. And I mean, I've said it before and I'll say it again on Facebook and stuff like that. The way things are going and how ignorant people, and I'm, I'm not talking about one side or the other. I'm talking about both sides. <laughs> yeah. It's so hard to stay biased in it. 
because you get shit from both sides. Yeah. Edit me out again. Sorry, I'm cussing. <laughs> this this is a really heated topic for me, but <laughs> because I'm a crim student. So, uh, I mean, yeah. I'm getting thrown in a group that I don't like being thrown in. And the ones that of us that are being thrown in that group, we retaliate by throwing them in a group. And that's not how it should be. Like, like I said, it's so hard to stay unbiased right now just because of things. The two officers that were shot as livid. So right now, it's just like, you know what, if, if that's the way, if you're, they're going about it the whole wrong way. You, and it may be because I wasn't born that way. I didn't have that trouble growing up or any type of struggle that they may, they're going through or whether or not they are or not. But this is how I see it. Mind you, I am open-minded, but at the same time, the way they're retaliating about it, I'm done. I'm like, you know what, I will side with law enforcement and maybe right. that's just my criminal criminology speaking or what from what i've seen from people let i'm at the point like when, when i was growing up in, um in high one of the guys in my neighborhood my very very best friend we started a business together he was a black guy and i mean we did everything together for years and then he his dad got sick and he had to move to la and and run the carpet his dad's carpet business and I haven't seen him, but only, I mean, we did everything. Like when we went on his mom's, or his mom's house for Thanksgiving and stuff like that, everybody that, that would freak whenever I walked in the door, they're like, what are you doing? Here here comes white boy? The white, where did, who invited him? White right? boy. Yeah. But only at the same time, whenever he came in with me in places, everybody was like, ooh, you know. Well, and that's the thing. Like we've been primed. For centuries, like the whole, I mean, it's, it's been in our history. But I also grew up with cops. My dad was a sheriff. My uncle was a sheriff. I mean, I grew up running around inside the sheriff's department. I knew a lot of the police. There is, there, there is like some bad guys. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm, but only not all of them are bad and the same with race. There oh, yeah. is some bad guys in every well, there's single classes. race. Well, you have you know? classes within races. Yeah. I mean, and I hate to say it like this. If you want to edit me out, edit me out. <laughs> but I'm Mexican. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, we have our, what they're called, wetbacks. Or vato. We, and they're like that with every race. It's yeah. not just one or the other. And it's like that in the officers, too. Over here, we call them trailer trash. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? So, I mean, people sit there and they'll throw you in a category before they even look at you. And it's just by the color of your skin. Well, I actually think that like you were saying, they're they're like playing this and I don't know if you guys are talking about this in your class like why did they they buy 38 billion rounds of ammunition? No, that has, yeah. You guys haven't talked about that like, man, I would be bringing that up if I was in a law thing like that's more there, there's only like 250 million people in the united states i mean that's enough to kill everybody 10 times alien you know? invasion do you think so they you think they're, they're <laughs> but if okay let's think about this though if there was a real alien invasion and that's what we were prepping for why would they divide us the way they're dividing us they are too right now yeah you know what i mean the whole race issue stuff like that and it's been going on for a while it's even yeah. with the whole jumping the border too i mean they're dividing us no no who is they the government media anything higher than your normal average citizen has that type of power newspapers are biased like we've talked about our media is terribly biased there's no true news out there no matter what you say or what you think there is no true news out there it's all biased. Yeah, you have to really dig on the internet, and then you have to read like everybody's Everything. different stuff. You got to form your own opinion, guys, and you got to get out there and start digging. It's yeah. not just the news. Uh, there are um, several satire websites. Oh man! Okay, and people, you guys not need to stop putting those on your wall or or liking it because they're making fools out of you. Yeah, but see, um, like, I'm an example really quick that there was this one from Dr. Laura. It said, Dr. Laura went and purchased 15 pet bulls and had them all killed. And people were going, that bitch. Yeah, that, but they want to believe it. That's you know, why. It's they're, like, that's really, why. guys? Yeah. You know, the Inquisitor. I forgot what it was, but it was a satire. Like the onion. Uh, you know, you guys need a real, I mean, if there's something like that that sounds so off the wall, so stupid, don't believe it. 
All right. Well, everybody knows, like, when you go, like, the National Enquirer. I mean, even when I was a little kid, mm. you knew that was fake. No, it's not. Know? Men in Black use that to really go in search of paranormal stuff. You know that, right? You're nah. so full of- <laughs> <laughs> The Men in Black, the movie. Come on, guys. I like, married remember? Bigfoot. Remember? Right? And they I'm had too, his kid. I'm too young for that, Jeff. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Men in I Black? remember the movie, but I was so little. Okay. I, I remember. I remember in the movie. Yeah, they yeah. they go in to get all of the, all of the uh, yeah the newspaper. Okay, but anyways, all right. Yeah, I I don't know what is going on. Uh, they are definitely trying to make the public turn against law enforcement really bad. Right? Yeah, they now. are. Yeah, they are really doing their job to make it happen. Um, and and I I don't even know why. I I don't get it. Is it? Okay, now, is it getting the cops mad enough that they're ready to shoot anybody? Ooh. Or is it getting the people mad enough where they'll start shooting at the it's cops? Both. Like, you it's know. both. I mean, we read a book, and I, I don't usually promote stuff like this, but it's called Blink, The Power of Thinking Without Thinking by Malcolm Gladwell. We read it in my ethnic and gender class, Krim. And... It opens your eyes to, like, when you look at somebody, because we all do it, there's no denying it. I'll look at somebody and I'll be like, okay, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to pick pieces and pieces that I like about you and there's going to be some things I don't like about you. I'm going to sit there and judge you. In that split second, we all do that. And we take things for face value. And in this book, it kind of brings that up. And it tells you, okay, you can't stop it, but you could alter how you see things. Like, you could sit there and, like, think without thinking. And, like, I would have, if the whole world, or if there was a class you could take just on that book, I think it would help. Or just look at some of Malcolm Gladwell's research and some of his books. But Blink is the one that kind of made me sit down and think. Because I do it, too. On Facebook, I'm all about the cops. I'm like, (laughs) hey, blue lives matter, too. And at the same time, you need to be there and be like, you know, all lives matter. It shouldn't matter. Blue, black, white, yellow, brown. But, like I said, this book really will sit there and make you think about some of that stuff. Because we all do it. If you you really, if you research the race thing, or a human race, we're all really brothers and sisters. It's all the same. We're all the freaking same. Heck yeah, man. We we all came from the same DNA way back. There was just two people with this certain DNA, and then we all came from that. So really... We're judging our own family. Well, I mean, I mean, really. If you cut yeah. any one of us, we all bleed red, guys. Yeah. And we all have feelings, and we all could hurt people with our with with our words really bad. I mean, yeah. But, but I mean that that's how I see everything. I just don't know. Like I, I'm starting to freak out on things are coming. Like we were talking about being enlightened. It seems like we're getting enlightened. The government knows something. They've been putting things in the water. Now all of a sudden they started this war on this thing that's getting people riled up and they're shooting each other in the Well, let's look and, at this. Like, you know. This is a major news event. So with any a- major news event, what are they covering up? This is at the forefront right now. This is what's ev- it's the topic you hear in the freaking streets. Yeah, it we, is. I was in Panera the other day, and some chicks were talking about the rioters because they were walking down Blackstone. And I was like, okay, big event. What are they trying to cover up? What's the main goal? <clears throat> well, you got New Year's coming right around the corner. There's a, not, a lot of new laws that are going to take a, an effect. Oh, yeah. All right, so maybe they're trying to cover up a lot of that that's going to hit the books here pretty soon and there's a lot of laws coming in and i don't know you know <laughs> i heard people were saying that uh that they've passed some stuff that are really going to piss people off so maybe that's what they're trying to do i don't know i've been saying we need to get rid of all of them for a long time i'll probably come under a lot of what laws no the people that make the oh, laws oh yeah they but don't work for us no more and they haven't no. Well, the thing is, I mean, you have in any business, and this is the problem with our law enforcement as well. You have these people at the top, older, white, I'm going to throw it out there, white men. And You're racist. they have, shut up. They have, <laughs> let me talk. They have that mindset. I mean, they're from an older generation. I'll let my grandfather has that same stance. He, my grandfather is very racist. And um, 
So when they go to hire somebody to fill in that spot, it's going to be of that same mindset that they are. That's how business works. You want to pass on your business who has the same type of mindset that you do. So as we go through, that's all it is. It's from the next person to the next person, and they all have the same mindset about things, whether it be race, class, anything like that. So it's going to come through. It's going to rain down to your normal sheriff's deputies and your, your police officers who are out in that street. And they're going to be hired over somebody who has a different mindset. I mean, it's like that saying with lawyers. Like, all lawyers go in there to change the system. They just become a part of it. Yeah. So that it's just like law enforcement. That's true. So we need to start from the top. We need to start with I all of our big wigs and get them out and start fresh. I, you know, getting to the paranormal end of it, I don't think we have much time. I, I think something's coming to a head, and mm-hmm. this is like... All this stuff is pointing to some kind of intervention or I think o- enlightenment happen. or... I'll run for president. You know, I, Vote I, for emerald shirts to everybody. I have a feeling there's not going to be no presidential race. I mean, when you, when you start really reading, there's like what, what the main... It goes back to the reptilian thing again. There, uh, these dudes are calling the shots on the earth and controlling the governments and the and the corporations and everything and this is all going to be revealed or something and nobody's going to like it when they find out that we didn't really we weren't really free oh we haven't you know. been voting forever There's i mean we no weren't voting. really free from the very beginning we yeah. weren't and we never were it was just like we thought we were you know and now it's just they're just going to crack down and they're going to make it so, you know, how they want it. And we're not going to there's not going to be nothing you can do about yeah, it. Yeah, but like I was saying earlier, the whole martial law thing, they're going to get so much stuff for that. Yeah, I think about that. Bas- Bas- Basiago people, being the president, you know. Well, it just depends because if you keep giving people free stuff where they don't have to work, they, they may get away with it. But I think the majority of people would be so pissed off. Well, it, you know, there's a majority of the people. And I don't want to say majority. Here we go. Um, <clears throat> if martial law were to go in effect, and let's say, let's say the economy took a dump, then a lot of people would be out of food. So we got a call. Is that Charles? Hello? Man, they they might be out of food, but if if we all go, you know what? I'm so connected to the pharmaceutical thing. I I just will die. Mm. Unfortunately. Because you need the medications to, yeah. s- to stay alive, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's go through that. Let me let Jeff know. He has some tips on fluoride. Tips on fluoride? To get it out of your body and stuff like that. Uh, Do you want to go into that? Drink chlorine. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I don't know. Um, I, I just stop using it. Just stop using it. Just fluoride toothpaste. No, yeah. he, has no he has tips. Oh, he asked Chip. Yeah. Oh, okay. Put okay, it on. hold on. Yeah. I'm going to put you on. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so okay. I was going to say drink chlorine. <laughs> Charles. <laughs> Hello. How are y'all doing Good, today? Good, Charles. Y'all have a great Christmas. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, uh, so what, what are your tips on getting the fluoride out of your system? Well, I uh, found out a few years ago, mine was off the wall. They, um, My levels were. And... Um, how, how did you wait wait wait? <clears throat> how did you figure out your levels? Well, I, uh, there's a guy at um, the University of Georgia uh, that in the med in the school of dentistry that is doing studies on it, and he uh, I sent fingernail clippings, and I, I sent three different times, and in just a short time I got my level da- down. I oh by tenfold. But the, about the biggest thing was I uh, stopped drinking tea. Tea is probably the biggest source that people have. There's a huge amount. One tea bag has more than a gallon of uh, city water. Okay, tea. tea you mean <clears throat> you mean um, the bottle tea already, or bags of tea? tea? Bags of tea, bottle tea, any tea, and then. You're using city water to make it. You've got the fluoride that's in the water, and then the tea plant absorbs fluoride. There's a lot. There's fluoride in the soil, oh. and certain things incorporate it a lot more easily than others. Plus, there's a lot of pollution in India, and 
they have in Sierra Leone where a lot of it's grown. And if they do any irrigation, a lot of times they irrigate with city water, which is, guess what, fluorinated. Well, uh, one of the things to do is um, you want uh, to be as you want to be slightly acidic. You do not if you eat a low protein diet. In India, there are a lot of people that have what's called fluoridosis, which is when when it's accumulated in your skeleton and they'll be deformed and have gnarled up bodies and things like that. They'll be have, be have kyphosis and 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 other representations. Well, um, they eat a very high carbohydrate uh, diet that um, very little animal food, and that's what uh, causes it. The other thing that helps a whole lot is trying to to, to limit your halides in your diet. Um, fluoride is a halide, and so is chlorine. If you're going to drink on your water, you're going to get it if you get bottled water or whatever. The only that doesn't have it is uh, distilled. Or you can get a real complex filter system. Uh, there's a place in Georgia, Pure Earth Water. Uh, they have some filters that are really great that get that out. But if you get the chlorine out, chlorine's a halide too. Every halide that stacks on each, o- each other uh, uh, makes them go in. Well, if you don't have chlorine in your water, filter it, get the chlorine out. That helps a lot. And then be sure you have your salt that is iodized. Uh, iodine is a halide, but we need it uh, for uh, uh, our thyroid to function. The thyroid is one of the primary things that you kill with fluoride. My thyroid completely stopped, and that was when this happened. It just uh, I was just saying, God, I want to know the answer. So I said, Well, I think I've got it's thyroid. It's got to be. Uh, um, fluoride because of the tea. I googled tea immediately and found out the, the levels of fluoride that were in tea and I was drinking a whole lot of tea so I quit. I went cold turkey and by all rights I should have had the headache from hell but I didn't and it was just that was what I, the action I was supposed to take so it went away and I started getting better. Well we did a baseline fingernail test and then we did them two other times and I got mine down to below the the, there's kind of a baseline of, of people he uh, has checked, and I was even below the baseline, and I was still using chloride toothpaste and a few other things. But if you have if you have your iodine in your body, your thyroid's working, and then the other thing is getting adequate magnesium, mag, ag, magnesium and salt in your body. Salt helps keep your calcium ions suspended. And if they're suspended, uh, they don't start settling out in the in different uh, organs and different uh, cellular tissue. Uh, and salt helps that happen. The other thing is the magnesium. You have a, uh, a push-pull between magnesium and, and uh, calcium in your body. And that is what keeps... Um, those two minerals go. You have sodium versus potassium, magnesium versus uh, calcium, and those are, you get the balance. Well, if you have enough magnesium, you don't start doing the calcium deposits. So I up to my magnesium, and I made sure I got plenty of salt and iodized salt, and then started taking thyroid hormone. And um, we managed, had a big night, not just overnight come up on my thyroid. And they thought I had cancer. I mean, while they were doing the test, the the, the tech said, "Go down to your uh, doctor's office and wait. You're going to have to talk to him. There's something that's urgent." And I, you know, that really was. They don't tell you that. They usually say, "Oh, you uh, ask your doctor what's wrong." They directed me instantly down there. Get down, biscuit. Uh, and um, okay. so I, I I got my levels down, and I feel wonderful now. But they did two bone scans, too. One of the bone scans, I showed real high density. But then they did a bone scan for calcium, and I was missing on calcium. And what had happened before I had started going into my skeleton, we've got it out now, uh, and my skeleton's normal. That was like two years ago. 
but the way to keep it from going. And in a lot of the processed food, like say you drink a Coke, uh, they make the Coke in a factory, and guess what? They're going to use, they're not filtered water, but they're going to be using um, local water, that uh, city water, before I'd going to go on top of it. And you get breakfast cereal. When they make the breakfast cereal or, or make or, or do processed food at a, at a factory, they, they guess what they could use? They use the uh, fluor, fluoride water in the city to do the, the cooking of the uh, product and everything like that. So you can't really get it all away from you unless you drink distilled water and uh, are very, very careful with your food and have stuff that is grown only with rainwater. And none of us can do that. But the best, then, other than that, the way to really keep yourself protected is to uh, make sure that you're, you you have an acidic body. This crap, these people are saying, oh, alkalized. They don't know what they're talking about. You've got to have acid to digest your food. Your stomach is, is a, like a pH of 2.2. Your blood's got to be about 7, which is neutral. And if you go alkaline, you have alka, alkalidosis, alkalidosis or, and you don't want acidosis. You want your blood just flat. Uh, and uh, then your skin's supposed to be like a pH of 4.5 to, to 5, and that prevents the germs from growing. It's called the acid mantle. And you go go from there, but uh, you can without get going real hinky and crazy on it. You can get a lot of the stuff out of the way, and I'm as intuitive as anybody alive now. I, I that didn't go away, but it's gotten better since I've knocked this out. But oh, I was a avid tea drinker, I, I, and it doesn't matter if it's a green tea, black tea. Green tea has a little bit less. But they're the same plant. It's just the way they, they process it a little bit differently. They pick it off and steam it just for a few seconds and then crumble the leaves. Okay. The black tea, they, they steam it longer and do an, a little bit of an aging process. But even tobacco smoke has it and everything. All right. All right. Hey, I appreciate the information there, Charles. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, we talk about fluoride a lot, <clears throat> and uh, we just never really talked about how to get rid of it. Uh, I, I would just say, you know, stop taking it or if you can. If you can't. You can't. I know you can't. It's, it's in, but go go through the foods. Right. And you'll be shocked. Go uh, the fluoride levels in the foods. But uh, if, if you are not getting sufficient protein and a few other things, you incorporate it into your body a lot faster. And if you have sufficient calcium and vitamin D and the other things, they will tend to go in because that's what the body's designed to take calcium and magnesium and those things. Wham! They'll go right where they should. Uh, they'll they'll get in front of the line. They'll they'll, pu- they'll push their way through. So it's uh, it's basically having the good to get rid of the bad. Right. Yeah. That's have way, all the that, other that's minerals. That's the way it is in everything. Right. Right. Yes. Okay. All right, Charles. Thank you very much for the info. Appreciate it. See ya. See ya. Have, good. have a great New Year ahead. You, you, yeah, too. you too. Thank you. Bye bye. Um, you know when he was mentioning tea, what business that we've talked about on the show that serves liquids to the to everybody that your mom is a freak over? Starbucks. Oh, that's right. Okay. And um, what do, yeah. uh, do they serve a lot of tea in Starbucks? Yeah, they oh. have a section for teas. Okay. They're really good though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Teas, you know, coffees, I you know, I would not be surprised. And we talked about you know, Starbucks on this show. I believe that is one of one of the businesses out there that are giving everybody the poisons. I mean, he mentioned teas. I mean, that's. I mean, Starbucks is just one of those. That's crazy for teas and coffees and. I still go there, so I go there rarely. Though I'm not there. Not day. like your mom. Your mom lives there, huh? Sorta. Of. Yeah, there's but a my lot mom's of people. Still cool. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of people who cannot go. Who cannot start the day without a Starbucks? Just Simple like the as Lego that. movie. Seriously, yeah. exactly, yeah, no. That's their song, you That's know. Just, I mean, Starbucks, and you guys are probably going, 
you know, we've talked about this on the air about the logo of the Starbucks, um, what we think Starbucks is really about. Uh, <clears throat> you know, we've showed the logo, um, uh, uh, the siren. Siren, yeah. Yeah, the siren. Uh, that is basically attracting all the people. To, I mean, you know, people are infatuated with Starbucks. I mean, it's like I see a Starbucks in their hands, whether it's an ice cold drink or with a coffee in the morning. You know, there I can see their faces walking out of Starbucks, smiling. Yeah, I got my it's Starbucks. Like a social thing, I think. Well, some people can't yeah. function without a Starbucks. And yeah. that's where I'm going with this. What if? the the purpose of Starbucks because there are I mean wherever you look you are addicted you are I mean do you think your mom could go for a week without Starbucks if she absolutely had to she would because my mom's just freaking but would it be hard yeah uh I, you see, I you don't know. know because she gets it on and off. Like she'll have spurts of it. Uh-huh. Like she'll, it's, I mean, that's kind of like a drug addict, huh? Right. Well, you have spurts of it and then she'll be fine for like a couple months. But then she go gets, gets another one and then she's on it again for another You know, couple like, months. like um, Charles was saying, if you don't take your caffeine addict, you know, you'll get headaches. I remember when I, for some reason, I don't know, a couple of months ago, I ran out of Pepsi. And I stopped drinking Pepsi for a week. I was getting a migraine headache forever. I was going, why am I getting a headache? Getting why? moody. And it's because I stopped drinking the caffeine. I mean, literally, I drink a lot of soda, a lot of Pepsi. I'm a Pepsi-holic. Pepsi, call me for a sponsorship. Um, <laughs> and, and uh, yeah, I it, you know, it's like Starbucks. I wonder for those people who are Starbucks addicts, if you would stop for a week you guys would probably just get a migraine headache that just would not go away i'm gonna try that i just got a gift card for starbucks for christmas Mm -hmm. i'm gonna get one every day for what a week week and a half and then just not get one just drop it you think anything would happen for one day no because it's still gonna be in your system so so you have to let you have to let it get out of your system i don't know how long it takes for that to happen like a week a week on a week off and we'll see from there you can try that all right, I'll try that. Okay. I want and a Starbucks. Get, get something, get a tea. You drink tea? I'll drink tea. Okay, get a tea and see what happens. And see, for some reason, I can see her coming in on a Sunday. Shut the F up. Don't leave me alone. You know, you just so irate because, you know, your head it hurts so bad and you're... Okay, you know, here's what we'll do. I'll start tomorrow <clears throat> and then I'll be here next Sunday. I'll do like a journal or some weird stuff like that. Okay. And then that week later, I'll be off of it. So by that Sunday... If any, will have some effects. Okay, we we'll could see, try we'll that because I did that with the toothpaste, and I, I would get headaches after I would brush my teeth in the morning, not knowing why. Once I switched to Tom's, mm-hmm. no headaches; they're gone. Like it made me sick. Hmm. So now, did the, you the Tom's made you? No, sick? no, no. The Tom's. I'm not sick on the Tom's, huh. but I'd have like this miniature stomach ache after I used it, and I just thought, okay, maybe I'm swallowing too much toothpaste or something like that, mm-hmm. and I'd get a headache later on during the day. So I was like, all right, let me try just Jeff's BS toothpaste. Right. So I got some toothpaste at Target, and I used it. And then for that week, not realizing it, I was like, oh, I'm not getting a headache anymore. Where'd the stomachache go? So were you getting the stomachache and the headaches when you were on fluoride? No, yeah. Huh, interesting. Yeah. And now you don't have headaches or stomach Now aches. it doesn't give me a headache. It doesn't give me that foul taste in my mouth. And maybe it's just like... The placebo pill effect, maybe right. it, that could be it, but I'm still using Tom's and nothing. So I'm thinking it might have been the fluoride, and yeah, I do end up swallowing a lot of toothpaste. But Well, with you using the fluoride and you drinking a lot of tea, you were getting like double the dose. And maybe it was getting you, maybe it's too much fluoride was well, getting you sick. I wasn't really drinking a whole lot of tea. No? Was I? I don't remember. Well, I don't know. Because I switched to Tom's, God, this was like three months ago. Hmm. Yeah, I love it. So you guys, we uh, kind of like are giving you guys some hints about um, what they're feeding you in, in toothpaste, fluoride. Uh, but yeah. they push it on you. The whole the whole like commercials, oh, buy kids toothpaste, enhance with extra fluoride. Yeah, yeah. Why oh, yeah. do I want to give that to my sister? <laughs> we are, uh, my wife and I are going to make an appointment with a Clovis dentist who does not give fluoride. In, in in his practice and who takes out 
the, the fluoride uh, fillings. Uh, the fillings. The, uh, the, the mercury filling. So I'm going to go see him, and I'm going to talk to him about, you know. Oh, him. Maybe he could be a guest. Uh, that would be that's interesting. That's exactly yeah. what I want to do. I want to get him here as a guest about the mercury fillings. Yeah. Because um, I, I, I've had bad allergies all my life, all right? Honey. And No, I tried. I, well, no, I can't say I have tried. Um, I, I have a feeling the mercury in my teeth. I have a lot of mercury. Uh, and... Um, and it's because when I was growing up, my digestive system was not uh, ingesting the correct minerals and vitamins that I needed. I was so skinny growing up. Uh, I, I, you know, my parents thought there was something really, you know, really bad inside me. I mean, I, I was sick with something. I was so skinny, I could eat. Uh, two hot dogs, I mean, large hot dog with French fries, you know, in one setting, and it would go through me so fast, and I would literally go poop within an hour, and it's gone. You. Okay, I know that sounds ucky, but there's a reason why I'm saying this story, is they took me to doctors everywhere, to Mexico, to the United States, trying to figure out, I mean, it was unbelievable. I remember we were in Mexico, because, you know, sometimes if you go to Mexico, sometimes they have, you know, gimmicks and gadgets that can work, right? Well, they gave you this stuff to drink, and then they were going to do a, a, a look at your inside, how it, okay. I told the guy who was going to give it to me, goes, I go, I bet you if I drink this, I bet you I could poop it out in 15 minutes. And, and, and so I drank it. It was, ugh. And what I did is I started walking really fast, literally almost jogging back and forth down the aisle and uh, the other where we were at the clinic and and I did that really fast really fast really fast and they put me in and they sat me down in the whatever they were looking you know the, the x-ray or whatever and it, it went through my system already because of, of I was of the exercising I was doing and they so were going, like a flash they were going they were going whoa because yeah. we've never seen anybody because you, know, you literally have Miles. Uh, miles, miles of intestines, right? Well, it, that's how fast, and and it was not breaking down. My when I would eat foods, it would not break down the appropriate vitamins and minerals you needed to, you know, to you know, and and that, that's the reason why I had a lot of cavities, and I didn't have the right vi m uh, vitamins and minerals in my system to prevent the cavities, and among other things, I could, couldn't gain weight until one day. We went to a doctor, and he gave me these pills called pancreas pills. Pancreas. So I started taking those before I ate every meal. Boom, I gained weight like that. <laughs> what it was is my pancreas was not digesting, was not sending out or not digesting the food correctly. It, was, it, it, secretions, it gives you a secretion, and it breaks down the foods. My pancreas was not doing it, and that's all it was. So he gave me these extra these pills that gave me the um, the breakdown that needed to break down the foods, and I started gaining weight so fast. It was incredible. Um, and and the reason why I'm saying this is because there's a lot, probably a lot of people out there who have kids or who have young adults or even adults who are so skinny, and if you guys have tried everything to make this guy gain weight, use... Uh, go and purchase. Actually, it's over the counter. They're actually vitamins. That's all they are. And it's pancreas. Just punch in pancreas vitamins, supplements, and that's all you need to get. They're cheap. They're like twelve bottles for a uh, twelve dollars for a bottle. Do they have any side effects though? No, no, no. Yeah, one, you gain weight. <laughs> you well, gain weight. Well, I'm thinking yeah. of my great grandfather. Well, he has a thyroid issue though. It's not his digestion. No, it, but uh, he's skinny. Is he? Um, it, it, it um. It, it allows your food to digest the appropriate way and to uh, to break down the vitamins and minerals that you need. That's what my problem was with growing up. And, uh, and I know there's probably got to be a lot of people out there who have the same problem as I did and have it to this day maybe and you tried everything. Take these. These will not. You don't have to go see a doctor. Um, there's a guy at work uh, who is like probably in his early late 30s early 40s we were just talking you know and and i told him i go because he, he was really skinny right he's a black guy really skinny and he's holding up his pants and 
and I don't know how we came across talking about this, but he says, dude, he goes, I can eat and eat and eat and I don't gain weight. And even my wife hates it. And I told him about these pills. So he finally went and got them. I don't, I, have, I don't know if he got them yet or not. But uh, I suggest for those people, even if you have kids, I remember I was, when I was in LA, Los Angeles, working for a company installing intercom systems in schools. I just remember seeing a, a, a child inside the nurse's office. You know how when kids are on medication, they come into the child's, uh, to the nurse's office to get the medication, and the nurse gives it to them, and then they go back in. He, she opened up a bottle, and it had the pancreas, the same one that I was taking. I was tripping out because, you know, he's just, here's a, a second grader who is really skinny taking exactly the, the, what I was taking, you know, and it's like it took me probably 20 years to figure out what I needed to finally – so, um, so there you go. Uh, if you ha know somebody who is in dire need to gain weight, who eats food and it goes through them like butter, this is what you need to get. And I guarantee you it will work. All right. So there you go. Uh, See, I'm, I'm actually waiting for this season to be over. Because then I could get back to normal and get back to, like, I could gain or lose my 10 pounds. That, oh, that's Christmas season? That I gain back, you know, every year this year. I could walk by right now and just look at a table full of goodies and walk away five pounds more. I mean, it's ridiculous. Oh, I know. I got to hit the gym ah, so you know, much harder this God. week. Oh, shit. We only have 20 minutes left. I know. That went by fast. Usually I get bored with you guys about halfway. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I say. I probably missed you. I've been gone for a while. You have been gone for a while. You've been sick. You better stop being sick. I wonder what the sick is. Sick I think in the head. Is it the water or is it what they're spraying no, in the air? No, it's fluoride. the cold. It's not. I don't eat that. Oh, well, I don't know. Um, I get sick bad once every winter. So it's like usually I end up getting strep throat. I haven't gotten it yet. Knock on wood. But um, oh, that was you. me. I knocked on wood. <laughs> Come on, Jeff. Um, he's like, what? <laughs> no, I, it's normal for me. I get sick every winter, real bad. My mom does too, so it might I, be well, hereditary. I, I, I'm, you know, I'm, st I'm still the conspiracy guy, and the water. We talked about that. Now we got to talk about. Like, I put this thing on my Facebook today about the airplanes Chem spewing killing. the chemtrails. Mm -hmm. I think that has something to do with people getting sick. I, you know, I think it's like he was talking about all. He checked his fluoride level. I think everybody should check their aluminum and barium level if they could afford or their insurance will pay for it because I, I was looking at these maps and it's actual maps of uh, uh, satellites that look over the, you know, look mm -hmm. over everything. And in, it you could actually see where if it was a contrail, a real contrail, that it would go like the, the plane was going from New York to, you know, L.A. It should have, when it reached a certain altitude and a certain humidity level and temperature level, it should have a contrail all the way. Mm -hmm. But only it was only over the cities. It was like a every city had this grid patchwork over it. And it was, it was mm -hmm. like, what? I mean, that if everybody's seen that, all the people saying that, they're, that the chemtrails aren't real, they would be saying, oh, my God, they're real. And it was not just over America. It was over Italy and France and I don't know. <laughs> all over the like, place, man. I'm still man. on the yeah. table about the, the the chemtrails and stuff like that. Like, I I don't know. Well, I because I, I know the the whole the the crop dusting, like the pesticide stuff and stuff like that. That we learned about that in egg. So I know of those chemicals, but I I don't know. Like I haven't seen a whole lot, and maybe it's because they're trying to hide it. About well, they're not hiding a it. chemtrails. Like I don't know. Like okay, what the hell would they be spraying over cities? They they're just trying to do weather weather modification. They're trying to cool the sun, and you know, like if you go back and research it, you find out they're really they they've been talking about it since the eighties. The sun is getting too hot. There's global warming, and they're trying to like stop global warming and actually there's some research and studies that came out and said they did already stop it it, it is um they've stabilized the environment by doing that but what are what else are they doing 
I don't trust him. You could tell, huh? Like, yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't trust him. I mean, we were talking about the fluoride and then all the billions of rounds they bought and all the the way they were well, using yeah, the media the against everybody. And sneaky. It's it's kind of. I mean, I I just don't like none of it. Um, I'm I actually think it's us against them, and maybe I shouldn't say much more than that. Huh. <laughs> I get myself in trouble. Put a target Not on your tonight, two o'clock in the morning. Alan Thomas. Yeah. Everybody in your house has got their head on the ground with a gun pointed at it. <laughs> <laughs> I think We've that, been having a caller from L.A. Should huh? I call back? Somebody called in? From, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll call them back. They've called a few times. Oh, really? From sure. L.A., huh? Just go ahead and just accept it next time. Okay, if somebody calls in. Call them back. All right. Um, but, yeah, uh... Uh, I guess uh, we're just not a paranormal show. We're a doctor show. Sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, let me go ahead. Uh, what were you going to talk about? Let me silence her on the microphone. I just I silenced you. Oh, Bigfoot. Okay. Yay, Bigfoot. Somebody was saying something about Northport. Los Bigfoot. Angeles, you're on the air. Hey, how's it going? Good. Who are we talking to? Hey, what? What's your, what, uh, hey, first of all, what's uh, both of your names? I, I kind of slips me every time I um, try to listen. Well, uh, you got Jeffrey and Ellen. Jeffrey and, and Ellen? Right. And and then the other girl is... Emerald. Emerald. Emerald, okay. Hey, uh, nice to hear you guys. Uh, I I just listen every now and then. I jump on on Sunday and I listen. I didn't realize you were taking calls because uh, uh, the phone uh, said you weren't taking calls right now, so... But uh, anyway, uh, as far as Bigfoot goes, you know, I really think everybody's missing the boat on Bigfoot. I, I think it's really obvious they're interdimensional, uh, but uh, I think they're actually in tow with extraterrestrials. That is to say that I think extraterrestrials are using them kind of like workers, kind of like you'd see uh, utility workers when you're driving down the street. And uh, big, they use Bigfoots to do, you know, tasks. And, uh, you know, when people come around, they're obviously got extraterrestrials on their side, so they can basically beam them up at any which point uh, they run into an issue. And when people say they see them feeding and stuff like that, I think they're actually just collecting, uh, you know, uh, test uh, test. Uh, you know, testing the fish and whatnot. They're really not eating the fish or eating deer like people say they're, oh, eating deer and stuff. I think, if anything, they're grabbing them up to put on the, the UFO. Um, well, you know, we have had reports, and, I mean, we, we see this all the time, where Bigfoots have the deer over the shoulder and walking off with them and uh, and you know people there are reports so there are yeah, reports yeah reports and, pe and people are witnessing um, people being abducted by Bigfoots too but you know we've always thought that alright they're using them for consumption and they're can cannibalistic and they're eating them um, but we have heard that Bigfoots are you know interdimensional and possibly from another world as well because um, we've had reports of Bigfoot sightings and then soon after UFOs in the same area or, yeah. or UFOs and then and Bigfoot I, and yeah. I totally concur that that uh, for people who believe on that on that side of the fence I actually believe that they uh, are on the right track you know um, it's the same with Chupacabras uh, I don't think they're a government experience, uh, experiment. I think they're actually in the same category as Bigfoot. They're simply doing things. They're spying on people in their homes. They're eating. They they may actually eat chickens and and, and cats, but uh, they're really, you know, and that's probably just their preferred method of of consumption. And uh, that, but that's not where they normally get their their produce and their food you know yeah i you know what there are <clears throat> we wonder where are all these monsters coming from you know i mean because you know we talk about that here and we talk about different types of monsters and creatures you know where are they all coming from have they been here since the beginning and they've been just hiding away from public and in all of us i think 
I think they're actually coming from very close by and uh, that uh, it's simply, you know, a matter of time before we come to a conclusion that this is the case. I think that uh, there was a show on recently about the aliens on the moon. Did you see that? Oh, God, I've seen so many shows. <laughs> well, it uh, talks about structures on the moon. Oh, yeah, okay. And uh, they show a lot of... Uh, very, very convincing structures, and I'm not just talking about Richard C. Hoagland's structures. Uh, I'm talking about structures that have actually NASA has released the photos, and people have identified these structures: satellite dishes, possibly nuclear plants, possibly turrets, uh, alien bases. And I think that uh, these creatures reside in very close proximity to these locations and or in them. And, I, and, that, we're, and that we're just sitting here, you know, scratching our heads most of the time. Yeah, you, well, know? I, you know what? That, that could be very true. Um, you know, there's a reason why we haven't been back to the moon. Maybe, you know, we know what's there and they don't want us back up there. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I understand where you're coming from. I, I think, you know, a lot of what you said is could be true. Uh, but until we actually get a body, if we can get a body, like if you say they're interdimensional, you know. It, it, That's it, not going to happen. That's exactly what I'm saying. Okay. That will not happen. They are protected. Just like, you know, straight out of Star Trek. They are completely protected. Yes, there's an obvious chance that something could go wrong and we could accidentally actually shoot one and, you know, without them being protected. But I believe they're under guard. And uh, as far as uh, Emerald's opinion about uh, the news media, I believe that she's right. But I wish she wouldn't have just, you know, thrown the book at, uh, at uh, Fox News because CNN's just as bad. Oh, no, that's just an example. I know they're all pretty bad. Yeah, okay. It's a common example. Thanks for, thanks for taking my call, though, guys. Hey, well, hey, I appreciate you calling in and listening to us. Thank you. All right, Jeff okay. Allen. Have a good, happy all new right. year. Emerald. Thank you. All right, okay. bye-bye. See ya. Hmm. Well, we that's not the first time we've heard the interdimensionals. And, yeah. you know, no, so. that's actually a common theory with Bigfoot. Yeah, you know, people would be you know witnessing the same walk and all of a sudden it disappear and all of a sudden reappear again over there you know it's like whoa so i don't know you know i don't know i you know like i think you think they're pretty much physical right i do but only but i also like maybe maybe there's like two two types or three types or four types or ten yeah. types like i've tracked them i've tracked them and be in a open area above the tree line in decomposed gravel or granite right and it's like sand kind of and track them for yeah. half a mile and then the tracks stop and there's no place for him to go you know and then it's like where did they fly away right there <laughs> you know. so i mean yeah i I can't explain that. Right. But I also know that I've seen where they crawled away and did all kinds of stuff biological things do. Yeah. Like poop. You know. All right, let me throw you on. Bigfoot sightings. Yay, Bigfoot. Bigfoot. All right, you're We're talking. Bad connection here. Hello? Hello, you're yeah, on the you air. Go for it. Good. Who's this? Hello? You're oh, on, I'm on the air? You're on the yeah. air. Who's this? No. Oh, okay. Uh now I was I was in my backyard the other day. I was letting my dogs run around. Where, where do you where do you over my my uh, trash where, where, uh, cans? Texas. Okay. Around, you know? you're, you're, in so you're in you're you're in Texas. Hi, can you hear me? Uh, excuse me, my. Hi, can, can, you, can you speak a bit quieter? Hi, can uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, uh, uh, where are you calling from? I'm calling from a. Uh, Austin, Texas. Okay. Um, if you're if you're listening to us on the computer, lower your volume on the computer because there's a delay. Just listen to us on the phone. Okay. Okay. I muted it on my my computer. There you go. Okay. Now go ahead and talk. Okay. So I was I was I was roaming around in my in my backyard, letting my dogs run around. I, I noticed some movement by the trash can. 
I look up, I see, I see like an eight foot tall figure looks very hairy. Took a look at my dog, I pulled out my gun, and I shot a few shots, and it ran away. Uh, and I'm in Texas, so I have the big foot migrated down here to Texas. Boy, oh. you're breaking up really bad. Yeah. No, uh, shots fired. Well, excuse me? Yeah, so so you you took a couple of shots at the Bigfoot? Yeah, I did. He was he was going to steal my little labradoodle. So you wow. he, he was going to steal your dog? Yeah, you know, he, he might have taken back to them moon wizards. We don't want that. <laughs> my little labradoodle, my my wife got me made me get a little labradoodle. I love that little that little that little dog. <laughs> what kind of gun do you have? Uh, excuse me? What kind of gun do you have? I use a uh, Colt 45. Colt 45. Nice. So, so, you, so, so you took a couple of shots at it, huh? And it didn't hit it? Yeah, I'm, I'm not a good shot. I'm, <laughs> I'm no, uh, I'm no Willie Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> right on. So, okay. All right. Well, hey, appreciate you talking. No, go ahead. Now, do you think that, uh, now do you think Bigfoot is one of them moon wizards? <laughs> Um, you know what? We don't know what a Bigfoot is, to be honest. Um, but I can tell you right now, though, they do exist because people like you are are you know are wit witnessing them and, and taking shots at them with your gun. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I have a theory here that maybe Obama wanted to take all the Labradoodles and send them to our uh, new Chinese overlords <laughs> that run the Illuminati. Oh, so he, he made Bigfoot. Come in and take our Labradoodles <laughs> so we can make it into glue to create guns to make the new world order. <laughs> okay, well, I think you never know. So, all right, we got another call, so we're going to let you go, okay? Okay, don't let the moon wizard do it. <laughs> go ahead. Have, have, a, have a happy Christmas, you a you Merry you Hanukkah, and a crazy Kwanzaa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you too, thank you. Okay, we have a couple of minutes left. We got one more coming okay. up? Go for it. Good, good night and talk. Go ahead, switch over if you can. Hello? Hello, you're on the air. So, hey, this is Joe Inman. I talked to you. Who, who's this? Let me, cut this? let me cut this computer down here. Let me mute it, buddy. Okay. There we go. Oh. Yeah, I, I talked to you about that thing I saw on that oh, tree. Oh, dude, you're, oh, we only got one minute left, man. Oh. Oh, bummer. You want me to call in next week instead? Yeah. I'll, I'll call in next week, okay? All right. All right, dude, you thank you. Okay, bye. This is bye. the guy who saw the gargoyle. That'd oh, be super man. cool. Oh. He was, he was, I, now, I was listening to his story, and I was in the dark near a tree, <laughs> parked in my van, <laughs> and he was telling me this. I go, click, close the door, lock the door, and I'm going, crap, why do you have to tell me the story right now? So that was pretty funny. <laughs> so, all right, how much time we got? So, okay, Man. so we're almost there. So, okay, you guys. Uh, so, Labradoodles might be big foot. So. <laughs> that was good. I, I, woke, I mean, he kind of tied everything together that we were talking about. That was kind of cool. Oh, my cool. God, that was funny. So, all right, we're just about out of here, you guys. Appreciate you guys tuning in wherever you may be. Um, th this is it. Next year, next time you hear us, it's going to be 2015. Where did uh, the whole year go? It went by pretty quick. Wait, so 2013? 2015. Holy mackerel. I am falling behind. I'm going backwards. So... Um, next week, you know, I don't know what we're going to talk about, and uh, hopefully we'll have, you know, I have a couple of people I'm going to call and get, get on the air and uh, talk about some good stuff. So, um, so we'll we'll see what happens. But you know what? You never know what uh, who's going to call in. You never know who we're going to have on the air, and um, it's you know, every Sunday is going to be a good show. So I hope you I guys like tune in. A myriad of people today. That was cool. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so I don't know. It's I, like I could hear ham radio or something right now. Yeah, I hear something. It's like some kind of weird uh, talk. Oh, you know what? I had the hotline full blast. Nice. Uh, That's probably what it was. Well, I'm not plugged in. Yeah, plugged in. Oh, it's probably just picking up. That, yeah. yeah. Skip. So. <laughs> That's weird. So. All right, you guys. We're just about out of here. Uh, Music. Art, pe art Bell people are telling. We are out of here. So for Jeffrey Gonzalez and Emerald Bonilla and Ellen Thomas, we wish you a happy new year. And I hope uh, you have a good new year. And please... Stay safe, okay? We guys see you next Sunday. Bye, guys. Same channel, same location. Bye. You have been listening to Paranormal Central with Jeffrey Gonzalez and Alan Thomas, broadcasting worldwide at paranormalcentral.net and on artbell.com. Stay tuned for next time.
remember to keep your eyes to the skies. And we hope you witness something you cannot explain. Yeah.